What's up, everybody? You know what they say, the early bird gets the worm. And all of you that were here early, we're going to get started because my depot is over and we are about to get to closing arguments. But first, I want to watch together as the judge explains to Mr. Brooks that he could forfeit his right to even give a closing argument. And we're going to listen on 1.5 speed till we catch up, and then all of you will realize how sad it is that we're going to have to listen to this on one time speed. But we made it here together to watch part of this trial live. I wasn't sure it was going to happen, but it is. And for anybody that does join me here, I know you have plenty of options and plenty of different great people to watch this with. So thank you for choosing to do it with me. And my camera is acting a fool here, but it's okay. You're not here to see me. We're here to see the person formerly known as Daryl Brooks. So let's listen to the judge tell him he could waive his right to give a closing argument. Mr. Brooks, I'm putting you on notice that you can also uh, forfeit by your conduct the right to present a closing argument. In appropriate circumstances, um, the right to present a closing argument, no different than the right to testify, may be subject to forfeiture where your conduct is incompatible with the assertion of the right at issue. The goals that this court has attempted to follow throughout this proceeding are multifaceted and multifold. Uh, number one, I do have an obligation and have done my best to ensure that this is a fair trial. However, a fair trial does not mean a defendant has unfettered rights to state whatever he wants, when he wants. Uh, this court, not only through the course of the trial, uh, is deemed with the responsibility to control the presentation of evidence to as to ensure fairness and reliability of the criminal trial process. Um, it also includes uh, ensuring that the closing arguments are relevant, are appropriate. Um, this court must also uh, be concerned with efficiency and effectiveness and of course, last but not least, courtesy and decorum in this courtroom, what I would generally refer to as civility in the courtroom. Um, you do not have unfettered First Amendment rights or an unfettered Sixth Amendment right, sir. Um, you must conform your conduct to the rules of decorum, the rules of evidence, and the rules of procedure. While you have a right to present relevant and probative arguments to this jury, uh, you may not, and you may not present arguments related to such things as jury nullification, subject matter jurisdiction, the court's oath or lack thereof, if that's what you believe, whether this court is a court of common law, admiralty, all of those things relate to your claim as being a sovereign, which are frankly baseless, they're meritless, they've been debunked by many courts, including the court uh, in the Benaby decision that's been referenced by this court previously. I will give you a fair opportunity to present a closing argument, but again, it is not unfettered. The simple fact is, sir, this court- I wish- your right to present a closing argument. This court has the authority under 90611, under the various cases, uh, including Illinois versus Allen, including Rock versus Arkansas, although Rock versus Arkansas and uh, Chambers versus Mississippi dealt with the right to testify. Um, there is a decision. Uh, I looked it up earlier. I'm going to just pull it up and tell you the case site so that we, so that you have it. I would direct your attention to Herring versus New York, found at 422 U.S. 853, a 1975 case, although in a footnote, um, it Her does stand Herring for the proposition that a defendant who has exercised the right to conduct his own... Do you think he knows what's going on in his trial? Argument, citing cases to the right, judge? California, or following the same logic from uh, Rock and Anthony and Chambers, uh, a right, even a constitutional right that a defendant has uh, may be forfeited by conduct. This court... Uh, just like it attempted to do with regard to your right to testify and set up reasonable restrictions so as to uh, meet all of the goals that the court needs to meet um, are as will be as follows. And that is again, sir, you may not bring up um, matters that are not relevant to the determination of guilt or innocence. That means evidence that was not presented and not received in this courtroom is not relevant to your closing arguments. Um, it's not, uh, the arguments must be based on the law, not as you interpret the law, but as the law is, you must base your closing arguments on the facts that have been established during this case, meaning the evidence, the testimony. Um, as I indicated earlier, the, the purpose of a closing argument is to summarize the facts, marshal arguments, and focus the issues for the jury. Uh, it is fair that you comment on evidence, including arguing evidence to the conclusion or inference. Um, it is your ability or your opportunity to convince the jury that you are not guilty of these offenses. Um, you may not- She's already given him all this once, but- information. Neither party may vouch for a witness or otherwise express personal belief or opinion regarding truth or falsity of any testimony or evidence. Um, 
it would be improper to ask a jury to draw inferences that the parties know are not true. And your comments on evidence is limited to evidence in the case. You may not comment on facts outside the record or peculiarly within your own knowledge. Um, and, and that is just some of the guidelines for determining the proprietary of arguments that I am guided by from my judicial bench book and all of the cases that are referenced therein. So you are put on notice, sir, that even without an objection, this court may, in an effort to preserve the dignity, the decorum, and to keep the issues properly before the jury, may advise you during your closing argument to move on. If you do not honor the court's rulings, then you will run the risk of forfeiting your right to be present and potentially forfeiting your right to further present your closing argument. With that, I am bringing this jury out to complete the instructions that I need to complete to add to the credibility uh, instruction, the paragraph on implicit bias, and to let them know the full instructions that they received will have it, to read 160 closing arguments of the parties, and then to have the state go first as they bear the burden of proof. Now, Your Honor, I'll just let you make your record. I didn't overtalk you. I didn't interrupt you. Is that fair to say? I'll let you, I'll let you make the record. With all due respect, when, when, when will I be able to make the record? As I've tried to do numerous times by saying I, I wanted to present an offer of proof for my appeal. That's the chance for me to be able to make the record. I'm denying your request to make an offer of proof regarding your appeal. Oh, interesting. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not allowed to make the record at all, sir. I'm not allowed sir. to make the record at all. As I just let you did, because some, some of the sir, issues I have, have been, some you of the have issues told me what been, you want to do. I told you you can't. I've addressed your the Honor, request. Some of the issues have been me over talking you and interrupting you. I did not do that. Even though everything that you said, you have not proven for the record, and it's, it's unlawful law. You haven't shown one time that that's that is lawful for you to do what you been doing Mr. as far Price, as your rules. Once again, I'm not going to debate with you the prior rulings of this court. There's absolutely no need at this point for you to your make Honor, an offer of proof regarding my prior rulings or decisions that you disagree with. Your Honor, you I'm will going have an to inform, if I'm going to inform the jury. Every issue. Uh oh, we're buffering here. Let's try to refresh, see if that helps. There we go. I think we just, whoops. Oops, didn't mean to report it. So yeah, so we've just caught up. I was watching it on, um, you know, one and a half times speed because we were a little behind. So to catch up, Lisa, I wonder if the judge and jury will get mental health assistance after this. It's been traumatizing and exhausting. They can, in most places, make it available to them. So we will see. But we are caught up now. So no more warped speed. Just so everybody knows that's watching it here, I may pause it from time to time. Not a ton. I'm not going to talk over it. I may pause it from time to time just to give you some insights and reactions to the closing argument by the state, closing argument by Mr. Brooks. If we do get there, I expect us to have some breaks to discuss what's already happened today. Um, if we're not able to get into everything that's happened today, we'll still do a recap tonight. If we can get it all done now, then we'll just do it live right now together. So feel free to get your questions and comments in. I'll be scrolling them up on the screen as we walk through it. Uh, so again, thank you everyone that decided to join us. Hit that like button if you haven't already. So anybody else that usually comes to these streams can know it's up there and the algorithm can push it out to them and they can join us as well. Because as somebody said earlier, this is truly the best group of chatters on YouTube. The chat is a great place to be. It's a fun place to be. It's a nice place to be. All right, let's get to it. Regarding my prior rulings or decisions that you disagree with. Your Honor, you I'm will have going an opportunity to inform, if I'm going to inform to the jury. Every issue. Point for you to Your make Honor. an offer of proof. Sheesh, Louise regarding my prior rulings or decisions that you disagree with. Your Honor, you I'm, will going have an opportunity inform, if I'm going to inform to the jury. Every issue. Well, this is annoying, isn't it? Oh, it's the law and crime feed, somebody's saying. Well, is there another? Mm -hmm. Court TV has a good stream. All right, let's try that. Here I am thinking it's me, right? Uh... Where is Court TV? Where is their live stream? Let's just go to Court TV. All right, we'll get there, people. We'll get there together. Here we go. How am I, how am I being dishonored? How am I being in dishonor? How is he being in dishonor, guys? What did I miss? I am done dealing with How am I being in dishonor, Your Honor? How am I being in dishonor of the court? 
How? Mr. Brooks. Tell him. Made my determination. And have I'm I not, not preserved my right? This further. Have I not preserved my right? If you insist on interrupting the court and disrupting the flow of these proceedings by a blatant disregard for the parameters that I've set up, you will forfeit your right to be present in this courtroom and potentially forfeit your right to present a closing argument. Under what lawful law can you do that? Sir, I've you made can, my lots of hold in contempt by Illinois versus Allen. You can do that. You you stated that numerous times. Mr. Brooks, I want you here for the closing arguments. Apparently but do you, you do don't. Not I swear that is a face I give my son all the time. It's like, dude, I want you to stay up, but you are cruising for a bruising, buddy. It's time for bed if you don't stop. I mean, she's exhausted with fighting from him, with him at this point. Apparently you don't, Your rules. Honor, because all I said was it is my right under the First Amendment and the Sixth Amendment to inform the jury of the truth, their rights, and their duties. I never once said anything about, oh, I'm going to bring up subject matter, or I'm going to bring You're up right, this, sir. And or I'm going to bring up that. I will see what you have to say, but I thought it prudent, given your conduct to date and your insistence on bringing up issues that have no bearing in this case. This is a new day, relevant. though, Your Honor. Oh, a whole new day. It's a whole new day. It was prudent on He's my right. part to give you some guidance before... You potentially it's a whole new day. Uh, do that in front of the jury. Okay, but, right, but I will wait and see. Your Honor, is is still. But I need to get going. It's still oh, unconstitutional for you to so tell me that I don't have the First quiet. Amendment right that I preserve, or the Sixth Mr. Amendment Brooks, right I'm that I preserve. I'm going to have the jury brought out. I expect that you will be respectful, courteous, and quiet. Or I'll be, or I'll be held in contempt. Opens, or I'll be held in if contempt. If you insist on making a remark then I will excuse everyone from this courtroom and you will be removed because you will forfeit your right to be present for being disruptive. Under what lawful law? Because I haven't been ruling. dishonorable to the court. Madam Clerk, please have the jury brought out. Well, take me to the next courtroom then. Take me to the next See, courtroom. See, he waits. It's, not it's pure delay. And that's what we're going to talk about whenever we recap what's happened today. It's pure delay. That is his goal. He wins when he delays the trial. That's what he's trying to do. And so he waits till the very last second before she opens that door, then starts asking to go to the next courtroom. So she'll stop, do another colloquy with him. He'll break whatever rules she gives when she does open the door so that she has to send him back out, send him on his way, and another delay. That is his ultimate goal. It's what, 2.30 their time. So they got plenty of time to still get this done. And I think they're going to get it done today. And I'll have Fox 6 as backup. Thank you, You're not going to override my constitutional rights just because you feel like you can and, and you don't have no lawful law to do that. We all have constitutional rights and you cannot trample Brooks, on those. What you are raising are essentially issues that you can raise on appeal. No, I'm raising them now because they need to be on the record now because you won't allow me to make the record as I've let you do. You even went so far as to mute Brooks, me, which you can't even, there's no out. lawful law to say that I'm you can even mute you me. you to be quiet. They're coming Your Honor, out. Does Illinois versus Allen say that you can utilize the mute button? It does not. Mr. Brooks, so you're, door you're, opens, I expect you to be quiet. And you will you're, and I expect right for you to, to I expect for you to answer questions as a public servant, Your Honor. You're a public servant. The jury's coming you're in. supposed to serve the people. All right. Take me to the next courtroom, please. Take me to the next courtroom. Hold me in contempt. Hold me in contempt. Hold me in contempt. Yeah, he's trying to mistry this case. He's doing everything he can to mistry this case. Right when the door opens, all rise. It's no surprise to him. They're coming in immediately. Take me to the next courtroom. Hold me in contempt. Hold me in contempt. I have, I have constitutional rights that are being trampled on, and you're coming up with ways to make a lawful law where it doesn't say in Illinois versus Allen anywhere about utilizing the, the mute button. reflect that the jury bailiff is in here. However, the jury is still in the hallway. I'm oh. going to give Mr. Brooks one more opportunity Good. to be respectful of the court's rulings, whether Your he Honor, agrees with them I or not. I have dishonored the court. What do you, expect, what do you call what you just did? Of my rights under the Constitution, under the First Amendment, and under the Sixth Amendment. Mr. Brooks, your rights do not include you disrupting these proceedings I'm not, the way I'm that not you disrupting have the, the proceedings. You just told me you don't have to honor my constitutional rights in so many words. You're using the mute Mr. button. Brooks, that's not the even jury in your is outside this door. So he complains about the mute button, but also asks to go to that other courtroom. And appellate courts will see exactly what he's trying to do because none of it actually makes sense. 
They're not brought in. I'm yet. informed that I'm the jury. I'm informed that the jury is outside the door. Of their time. They're not in the courtroom. I'm They're asking not present. you to be respectful of the court's ruling. They're not you present. Agree with These are issues not. that need to be resolved before they are present. Mr. Brooks, they will not be resolved to your satisfaction. It's not about my satisfaction. It's about the Constitution. Made. It's about what's right. Are you going to? Are you going to answer questions as a public servant on why you're making up laws that are not in in the? Uh, Illinois versus Allen, it never utilized right, the mute button. It never said anything about a mute button. Send, send him away. Send him to the other court. Following the simple rules of Correct. The forum. I'm glad this happened now and not during his closing argument, just to protect this trial a little bit. And I'm glad, Andrew, they did not bring out the jury yet. Because let's send him to the other courtroom. Let him do his opening that way so she can uh, mute him, or as Sherlock said, boot him and mute him whenever we need to. It's very frustrating that he's doing this, but not a surprise at all. It's exactly what we all thought. Most of us don't expect him to get all the way through his closing argument. Courtesy, he has repeatedly talked over me. He's repeatedly interrupted. Even though I've made rulings, he's not respectful of the fact that I made a ruling, even though he disagrees with it. How can you I make attempted it? to bring the jury out, How can you and a he continued to talk. That's, that's, so, Mr. Brooks, you honest. have forfeited your right to Is be that... present for the state's is that closing not, argument? Your Honor, you'll can be you answer taken this to question? the courtroom next As door, a public and I will servant. invite you back over. He has to know at this point, and this has actually been a good thing for the judge. This is a good reason why she keeps bringing him back in for the appellate court. She is letting him know, you can come back, but if you do this again, you will waive your right, and you will have rights taken from you based on your actions. And she, by giving him all these chances, there's no doubt he knew it. He might as well have said, I'm waiving my right at this point. You can absolutely constructively waive your rights, even as a criminal defendant. When it's time for your you can't, closing, you can't argument. invite me back over. I can reclaim my right. Uh, so how can you? I'm in control. You're not in control. I'm in control. That's what you want to say. You can't invite me back. I'll come back when I reclaim my rights. No, dude. Have you not figured that out? That that's not how it works. That Mr. Brooks can be removed to the next courtroom, and I'll make appropriate findings findings when he's in the other courtroom. Yeah, when I and can you'll do mute so me, without, which you can't lawfully do. Um, interruption. You can't lawfully mute me. So now you now you're trampling over my first. All right, so we will catch up the stream here. We're about a minute behind. And we will make it a little smaller, answer some questions, and talk about what's already happened today. A. O'Connor, can you explain why she hasn't held him in contempt? He's already in jail. The biggest um, threat of holding somebody in contempt is throwing them in jail. And that's no threat to him. It would just delay the trial. She would have to make findings. And it would just take time, which is exactly what he wants her to do. Not what she wants to do, but it's what he wants her to do. She doesn't want to cause any more delays. Daniel, she will bring him back for his closing, probably. But will he stick around for the whole time? Or will she stop him, send him to the other courtroom, give him a chance to make his closing argument from that other courtroom? We'll see. Anything can happen at this point. Nothing would surprise me. Bruno, what, uh, what do you think he wants the delay? Just to be a jerk or is he trying to accomplish something? Both. He's trying to frustrate the process. He is trying to uh, make this trial just last longer and continue to stay in front of the cameras, get his 15 minutes of fame extended. Um, he is hoping that a mistrial will happen, and the more delays and the longer the trial takes, the better chance of a mistrial. Can she lawfully mute him? Kat Yarb, she can mute him, right? Yes, she can mute him. She gives him ways to make his arguments and uh, write any motions that he has, um, even have the objection card when it's necessary, uh, especially during uh, the discussion of the jury instructions and the reading of the jury instructions. She can absolutely mute him. She can bind and gag him. So what would you say that is? Effectively, what are you doing if you put something in someone's mouth and tape their mouth shut? You are muting them. She's just doing it in a very 2022 way in a much less barbaric but effective way. Mo, I cannot believe his arrogance. This is insane. It's really something to watch, right? It is really something, especially when he's talking about the good book, right? What does the good book talk or say about that? B.R. Longhorn. Could she be a, a causing issues with all the back and forth and stops with the jury right outside? Honestly, no. This is her actually trying to do everything to not cause a problem and not cause an appellate issue, but she can't control his actions, clearly. Lisa. Can he say anything in closing arguments that could cause a mistrial? Yes. Um, 
there are things he can do. He can violate the golden rule. He can talk about his sentencing. He can, he can do all this stuff, but it doesn't have to be a mistrial. And again, if the state doesn't want to move for a mistrial and the judge doesn't want to grant a mistrial, it doesn't have to be a mistrial. They can go forward. And they don't have to mistry the case because, as I said, you can't just cause a mistrial on your own. So, theoretically, yes, he could cause a mistrial, but there are ways to get around it. As you remember from the Rittenhouse case, the defense didn't actually want a mistrial. They wanted a mistrial with prejudice so they couldn't refile, which the judge, uh, I think he reserved ruling on. I don't think he actually decided. Please mute, mute him with his exhibity exhibits. Dave Heaton, Illinois v. Allen, didn't have mute. I guess it was the 70s, but the other alternative was gag him, wasn't it? I'd rather be muted. Yes, Dave, we had the same exact thought process. Lisa, can he say anything? Closing arguments, uh, I got that one. Uh, Tina's messy, crafty life. There is a court reporter in the other. She said it earlier today. Yes, a lot of you have told me there is a court reporter in the other room. So we are getting simultaneous transcripts. And uh, to me, that's awesome. And that's even better, or I should say worse, for his uh, chances at appeal. Um, because if they're hearing all the nonsense he's doing in the other room, throwing stuff, throwing stuff away, he thinks the court can't hear him. But it seems like people have told me that all of that's being typed down. Lauren M. I always thought I was patient. This judge potentially takes the cake for most patient persons on planet Earth. I don't disagree with you there. Don Medina. Can you please explain sovereign citizen for us trial junkie non-lawyers? So sovereign citizen basically means people don't have authority over them. They are their own sovereign. Some people like Daryl Brooks seems like he's a sovereign citizen, sovereign citizen of the United States of America, meaning only the states or the laws of the United States, like the constitution or federal laws apply to him. State laws do not. They're not even lawful laws. They're making judicial determinations. Uh, she has some state of Wisconsin uh, says she's a lawyer, but he doesn't actually believe it. It just basically means you don't submit to these authorities. The problem is when you tell the cops, you have no authority over me, so I'm going to do whatever I want, and you commit crimes. Well, it gets figured out real quick that there is such a thing as absolute truth, and the law enforcement officers absolutely have authority over you, uh, evidenced by the fact that you will be put in handcuffs, taken to jail, tried in a court like Mr. Brooks, who thinks he has no authority over them, sitting under the authority of a judge who he doesn't agree or submit to her authority with other lawyers he doesn't respect or think they have any authority over him, under laws of a state that he doesn't even think could be a plaintiff, or a charging party in a criminal case, but guess what? They are, and he's here, and if he gets convicted, he will go in a jail that he does not believe has the authority to hold him. But those bars hold true, even for sovereign citizens. Terry W., the end is near, and he can't handle it. That's the truth. He will get just worse as the day goes on. I agree with you, and I think the judge knew that, and I think she indicated that yesterday. By the way, it is not on mute. I have the, I think, let me double check that. You guys will all let me know. Yeah, the volume is on. It's just muted in the uh, courtroom still. Azam, the best chat community with the best creator. Thank you, Azam. Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire said it's back on. Um, the judge is talking. Not on, on Court TV, is it on? Well, we'll see. Court TV is behind, somebody said. Okay, well, we'll catch up there, guys. No rush, right? This is going to be a long ride. There's no reason to rush through it. We'll talk about it together. And like I said, I appreciate you being here. If you jump to another stream, that's cool. People are saying they're doing multicasts. All cool, all good. I'm happy and excited for all of those of you that decided to join me for this. I know it was last minute. Had a depot finish early, thank God, which was nice we were able to do this. Um, but we are going to... People are saying law and crime is back. Quiet in Here the we go. Please. Here's the judge. We're back. We are we're back, back on the record. Um, appearances are as they were before, except that Mr. Brooks has been uh, removed to the other courtroom. Um, the court did that because we came out on the record at two o'clock following the <coughs> lunch break. Uh, Mr. Brooks was brought to the main courtroom. Um, and during that almost 35 minutes or Hopefully so, Brooks reads this. he was insistent on raising a variety of legal issues with which this court has either previously addressed or which are meritless and do not uh, warrant any further response. 
He is insistent on making a record and an offer of proof. Um, this would not be the appropriate procedural mechanism, meaning an offer of proof at this time. We are not in the midst of a trial where the courts made an evidentiary ruling that would require the preservation of the record by making an offer of proof. Um, this court uh, has been attempting, frankly, all day to get through the reading of jury instructions to get to the point where the parties make their closing arguments and ultimately to put this case in the jury's hands. It has been challenging. It has been met uh, by resistance from Mr. Brooks. Um, I would Ain't once that the again truth? describe it as being stubbornly defiant, although at times he may wait for me to uh, make my ruling. He, he continues to not respect the fact that a ruling has been made and he wants to argue and re-argue and re-argue points that this court has already gone over. <clears throat> That's good on Taylor. And in an effort to simply put him on notice regarding his behavior, given the history of this case, uh, the court was attempting to set some parameters regarding closing arguments so that they are focused, so that they are proper, um, and that they follow the law. That was met with a considerable amount of resistance. And Not just resistance, but delay. We were supposed to start closings at three o'clock or at two o'clock their time. It's now 2.45 their time. So that's another 45 minutes to an hour that he's blown with these antics. That is his goal. Repeated And so Ashley, I get where you're coming from, for sure. Statements by Mr. Brooks that he has... Um, First Amendment rights, Sixth Amendment rights, 14th Amendment rights. He has all of those rights. That is not in dispute. But those rights do not come in a vacuum when we are in a court uh, proceeding and a trial such as this. Um, the rules of evidence, the rules of procedure, the rules of courtesy and decorum all <coughs> apply. And this case has demonstrated that a stubbornly defiant defendant can forfeit even important constitutional rights by conduct. Uh, that includes the right to be present. It included the right to present further witnesses and testimony. And it included the right of the defendant to testify on his own behalf. I hope that I do not have to go through um, a decision that forfeits his right or that makes a finding that he's forfeited his right to make a closing argument. I will certainly uh, wait and see how that goes. I would note he was very respectful when he did his opening statement. Um, it was clear. He made a variety of points. Um, he did so in a way that I would say was very um, conscientious of people's time. It was cogent. It was concise. It was probably about 30 if you've noticed, it's very common for judges to compliment pro se defendants on their defense to try to make them feel good and give them confidence. Let's let's just finish this. Come on, buddy, you can do it. Let's just finish this. That's that's what they're trying to do here in, in these compliments. 35 minutes. I may be off a little bit, but that's what my memory is. It wasn't overly lengthy. Um, I would hope that he follows some of those same things here when he does his closing argument, but he has been removed from this courtroom because of his stubborn defiance and disrespect of this court of courtesy and decorum. Um, and what I truly believe is an effort on his part to continue to delay and lengthen these proceedings. Yes, they were. Um, I've said it before, I'll state it again. Um, it is essential to the proper administration of criminal justice that dignity, order, and decorum be the hallmarks of all court proceedings in our country. The flagrant disregard in the courtroom of elementary standards of proper conduct should not and cannot be tolerated. And trial courts and trial judges that are confronted with disruptive, contemptuous, stubbornly defiant defendants must be given sufficient discretion to meet the circumstances of each case. No one formula for maintaining the appropriate courtroom atmosphere will be best in all situations. They noted three constitutionally permissible ways to handle such a stubbornly defiant defendant. Um, but they also indicated that 
No one formula for maintaining the appropriate courtroom atmosphere will be best in all situations. I've noted this before. This is a case from 1970. The technology that we now have in this brand new courtroom was not available then. Um, I have the ability to have Mr. Brooks appear from the other courtroom by way of audio and visual means. We can see him, he can see us. I've confirmed prior to calling the case that the audio was working, that the video is working. Uh, the one camera, there's four cameras in my courtroom, there's four cameras in his courtroom. However, it is set to one camera since he's the only individual there. Um, other than the bailiffs, but I'm talking about as a party to the litigation. So the courtroom, the cameras in my courtroom include one that would normally be on the witness stand that has been zoomed out so as to capture uh, the large majority of the jury box. I even adjusted the camera that's on the state's table so that uh, the exhibit that's currently up uh, to the my left, her right, Attorney Opper, is uh, viewable uh, in the camera sure. angle. Um, and uh, she is still present with it, meaning viewable within that as well. Um, and although I've made a finding that he has forfeited his right to be present for the state's closing argument, I'll find that the technology that I have available uh, it is the, that his appearance from the other courtroom is the functional equivalent of appearing in this courtroom and being present uh, due to the uh, technology that is available. Um, I do have him on mute for the time being because I needed to make a record and there is a very lengthy history with Mr. Brooks during this case of him talking over me and my inability to make an adequate record if I am in a constant. Yes, that is true. And she is correct. Um, this will go up to the appellate court first. I don't know if they have automatic appeals to the Supreme Court in, de in uh, life cases or murder cases. Some states have that, so I'm not positive, but it doesn't automatically go there, I don't believe. Joe, I don't think, think his rights have been stepped on. I think they've done everything to preserve his rights, so much so that the state is going to stand at their counsel table and give their closing argument from counsel table, which I would hate to do. In, in a federal court, we have to do it from the podium, but I would hate to be stuck at counsel table and he can't reposition himself because he's shackled to the table. So you got to pretty much stay in one spot and not put anything to block his view. To be present as soon as he is willing to conduct himself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the concepts of courts and judicial proceedings. That includes not interrupting the court. That includes respecting when the court renders a decision by way of an oral ruling, even if he disagrees with it. Um, so with that, um, I will advise him that once the jury is brought out, I will unmute him. I expect that he will be respectful of them. And I expect that he will not interrupt as the court goes through the uh, couple of final jury instructions I need to go through uh, including the reading of uh, jury instruction 160, closing arguments of the parties. And then I will turn it over to the state, but I will unmute him at that point. So should he have an objection, he will be able to state objection. I will be able to rule on it. And again, I expect him to honor whatever the ruling that is made. And if he does not do that, then I will utilize the mute function. Um, if he doesn't have it, we'll make sure he has the objection sign. And if I see that, I will unmute him to hear what it is and then make a ruling accordingly. Attorney Hopper. Your Honor, uh, two quick things, please. Could you confirm that the audio and video are working in the next courtroom? I don't know if you want to do it now or at a later time, but I think we should make a record as I will be displaying a PowerPoint during my closing argument, throughout my closing argument, and I'm not sure how that is projected in the next room or how it affects what we see in this room, Your Honor, but we should make a record of that at some point. Thank you. My understanding is Madam Clerk has the ability 
Uh, so that is displayed not only here, but in the neighboring courtroom. Um, if you would be so kind as when you start displaying it, just make some type of record, excuse me, so that the bailiff who's over there, if it's not being uh, display uh, the camera that Mr. Brooks is appearing, that is on Mr. Brooks on the left-hand side of the TV, and then the four cameras for this courtroom are on the right-hand side, but it's probably a, maybe a quarter to a third of the screen, and then the remainder of the screen is the PowerPoint. The monitors in the courtroom that Mr. Brooks is in are no different than what they are here. He would have one at the table, but he would also, there would also be the very, very large TV monitor above the clerk over there. Well, it's smaller, and then the very large one over the witness stand. So it would be very similar to what is here um, if he were present in. All right. People were telling me to go back here, so we're back here now. A man of the people here. Man of the people. Everything takes forever in trials, by the way. It always feel like feels like it takes forever, not just this. Um, but especially this. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Thank you, Rich Cat. Subscribe, like, do all the things. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, when I read the jury instruction to you previously regarding credibility, immediately. I had a prior version. Immediately he's waving his hands, which he was not doing before the jury came up. So he's literally doing what she asked him not to do. Of the jury instruction. Now, what I read to you at, in the very beginning, at the very beginning of this case was the most recent. I am going to read a short paragraph, but also tell you that in the packet that will be sent with the jurors to the jury deliberation room, it will have the complete instruction. And it's instruction number 30, 300, excuse me. And this is what I want you to know about credibility. In your determination of credibility, you must avoid any and all bias based on the witness's race, national origin, religion, age, ability, gender identity, sexual orientation, education, income level, or any other personal characteristic. Consider carefully the closing arguments of the parties, but their arguments and conclusions and opinions are not evidence. Draw your own conclusions from the evidence and decide upon your verdict according to the evidence under the instructions given you by the court. With that, I will ask Attorney Opper to start with her closing argument. Go ahead. PowerPoint. Yes. Oh, hold on one second. Mr. Brooks, do you have an objection? Nothing's... I thought I was supposed to. I thought I was supposed to be unmuted. You are now. All right, uh, Attorney Opper, you may start. Oh, he Thank just wanted did. to make sure he's unmuted. Hey, it's actually a good point by him. Good afternoon, everybody. It's kind of nice to stand here in the middle of the courtroom, you know, all week or the last three weeks. They shoved me at the end of the table because I'm the lefty in the group. It's nice to be able to look at you all and say thank you. Truly thank you. Start by maybe getting the jury to have a little chuckle to make them like you, feel for you, resonate with them. Each and every one of you, I want to express our sincere gratitude from the prosecution team, myself, Deputy District Attorney Leslie Basie, Assistant District Attorney Zach Woodchow. There's no one in this courtroom. Lisa, this is what I'm interested in the state's closing. Will they prove intent? Will they convince, of, convince us of intent? If they do throughout this closing, write intent in the chat. That does not realize the sacrifice that you've made serving your community in this very important task. You put your lives on hold. I don't even want to hear from your bosses. <laughs> Thank you. You've watched these proceedings and you've noticed as we sit at our prosecution table, we don't have a client at our table. Oh, she goes there. But rest assured, we do represent someone. 
Oh, no. We represent the people of the state of Wisconsin. I'll tell you right now, that's admissible in this case, probably because of what he's done. But we've actually objected and had the state not be able to say they represent the people of the state of Florida. And one of the reasons is it can be very confusing to a jury because the jurors are the people of that state. So it almost seems like these lawyers represent them, which is not, in fact, the case. They represent the interests of the people of the state of Florida, not all the people in the state of Florida. So the way you say that is very interesting. And she just said it. Now, I think it's fair game because Daryl Brooks is shenanigans, but that's very interesting and objectionable personally. I think so. I'm positive it's Emily would disagree with me. I can't bring it to the courtroom. People enact laws. People want to feel safe. People have representatives in Madison or Washington, D.C. that set standards, rules that we all are expected to live by. And when those rules are violated, prosecutors step in and enforce the law. Interesting start. Daryl Brooks does not represent anybody. He does not have a client. Daryl Brooks is the client. Daryl Brooks is the defendant. The state of Wisconsin is the plaintiff. Yeesh. It's really that simple. And it's consistent with any other criminal case you've ever heard about at any other time in any other jurisdiction. It runs the same, no matter what state, state or federal. I'm going to ask you. Here's my problem. She's opening the door now to him making those arguments. The judge has already instructed him on that. If the judge doesn't let him make some kind of similar argument and a counterpoint, I think that's problematic. I know you guys love it, but I think that's a little problematic. I would not have done this if I was her, but she's got a lot more experience as is the DA. So don't take any disrespect from that, please. She knows more than I do. For your guilty vote at the end of my comments. It's up to you. I can't tell you to do anything. Except I'm going to say one thing to you that I wholeheartedly ask you to obey. Attorney Upper, I'm sorry for the interruption. Your objection, sir? A mischaracterization of who I am and the way it was said. Uh, I feel like it, it was talking down. Right. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. So his objection was disrespectful? Objection, disrespect. That, that was his objection. But she did say Daryl Brooks doesn't represent anybody. That's also a misstatement. He does represent somebody. Then she corrected it by saying he's the client. A little bit of a shaky start to me, legally speaking. She's got plenty of facts to go with there. Continue. You must not, not, not consider anything about Daryl Brooks other than his conduct in downtown Waukesha on the evening of November 21, 2021. Nothing he's done before that, nothing he's done since that. When you go back to that deliberation room, please obey Judge Doro. Confine your comments to his conduct on November 21 of 21. Is he guilty of the 76 counts that he's been charged with? That and solely that should be your topic of discussion. So, what are the charges against Daryl Brooks? Thank you for your patience in listening to the jury instructions. They must be read for each and every count. But sadly, they can be summarized very quickly like this as far as the actual counts. Counts one through six are first degree intentional homicide while armed with a dangerous weapon. Counts seven through 67 First degree recklessly endangering safety while armed with a dangerous weapon. Counts 68 through 74, hit and run causing death. Counts 75 and 76, bail jumping. And count 77, battery. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mr. Brooks, what is your objection? Um, I have 76 charges, not 77. He's right. It's a mischaracter it's, mischaracterization of the charges. Uh, that is correct. It is uh, sustained. It should be count 68 through 73, I believe, and then 74 through 75, and then 76. 
Thank she, you, Your Honor. She I smiled. Apologize. She smiled like, how are you going to let him get a point? Attorney Opper? Come on. Sustained. He's right. 76, which I think she's also smiling because that shows competence. That shows he can hear. That shows it's like he's in this courtroom. That actually worked. I think that worked well for everybody. This is for my math skills. 68 through 73, 74 and 75 are bail jumping and 76 is bad. You can hear the smile in her voice. That mistake. We're going to talk about counts one through 67 in detail. Counts 68 through 73, hit and run causing death, in my opinion, are easily summarized as this. He never stopped. Never. Bail jumping, he was out on bail for two files in Milwaukee County facing felony charges there. No, I don't think she did that on purpose. He was ordered to not commit any further crimes. It would be next level if she did, though. He can, uh, was involved in any of the conduct charging counts 1 through 67. You should find him guilty of bail jumping. Battery, that relates to the split lip and black eye suffered by Erica Peterson. Patterson. We told the story kind of backwards. We started with the battery for background. First degree intentional homicide. You've yes, it is. In our opening statement, you've heard it from Judge Doro. Did Daryl Brooks cause the death of the victim, a victim? Did he have, I'm sorry, did he act with intent to kill, meaning either the mental purpose to take the life of another or was aware that his conduct was practically certain to cause the death of another human being? Count one, Ginny Sorensen. Count two, Lee Owen. Count three, Tamara Durand. Oh, I got, I got. Count four, Jane Kulik, count five, Bill Hospital. We can hear him. Count six, Jackson Sparks. Those are the individuals who lost their lives because of the conduct of Daryl Brooks. From there, we go to reckless endangering safety. What is that? In this case, it means that through his reckless driving, he endangered the safety of other people. Still some time he left, Mara. Demonstrating utter disregard for human life. That's true, he did. Now, behind me is State's Exhibit 15. It's also on the PowerPoint. If you choose, you may have this chart with you in the deliberation room to help you walk through each of these counts, if you find it helpful, it's up to you. If you don't want it, you don't have to have it. Summary it exhibits will be available for you. Summary exhibits like this are usually objectionable, and usually we can keep them out. They can be used as demonstrative aids for witnesses or during opening and closing. Usually we can keep them from going back to the jury, but you'd have to be a lawyer usually to know that, and it sounds like Daryl Brooks did not object to it going back to the jury. If you ask for it. And it'll take you... We'll see parts of it, Stacey. Did, in our presentation of the case, write down Main Street and address all the counts that were involved, all the counts that were charged. To prove reckless endangering safety, and I'm just gonna go back one slide, nowhere do you see there that we have to prove any degree of injury to anyone. Never once did J Judge Doe instruct you that somebody has to be physically injured. Now, Detective Casey told you that was the standard we use in deciding of all these hundreds of thousands of people who is included. Highly in doubtful, these Steph. Highly doubtful. And the decision was made by the prosecution team to include people who were physically injured to be efficient in our prosecution. And so. Everybody up and down the street, I would argue, had their safety endangered that day. I didn't charge 5,000 counts. 
we selected 60, 61 counts of people that we can identify by name in Exhibit 15 that were in. I agree, Pooh Bear, and this is what I always say. There's nothing harder than trial law as a lawyer and stressful and having all this in your head, especially dealing with him every day. I'm sure, it's miserable. I don't blame her at all. The pro the things that I blame her for are the beginning that she planned on going through that people of the state of Wisconsin and you know, those kind of arguments about, you know, this is what we do, this is how the law works that I wouldn't have done. Not her presentation. I think she's doing fine with the presentation. Injured by the conduct of Mr. Brooks. Those are the people in green. People in red are the fatalities. And we presented this case to you in much the same fashion that is presented here on Exhibit 15 as to how the injuries occurred going down that street. Good enough so far. We'll see how it so ends. We are absolutely held to our burden of proof and the elements for each offense that Judge Doro instructed you on. But we are not required to prove any injury to anybody. The question is, was their safety endangered by his reckless conduct? See, I wouldn't go with that argument personally um, because you have so many people injured. To say you don't have to prove anybody was injured is confusing potentially to the jury. I think they're going to win the case, but if we're going to just talk about this closing, why would you argue all that? I mean, you have all these people that were injured. You can say, this was proven. Of course it was endangerment. Look at all these people that got hurt. We don't even have to prove they were hurt, but we did is reckless driving. <clears throat> now, some of the groups, it's pretty easy. They walked in a formation and you can get a photograph or a diagram and you can kind of see pretty easily who was located where, right? And you can think back to the videos that you've seen for each of these groups. And remember, and you'll see them again, the path of the vehicle as it went through each of these groups. Agreed, Diana. This is South Band, of course. All of these names that are being displayed on the PowerPoint Exhibit 21 are on Exhibit 15 in green for Waukesha South Band. Pretty much the whole left half of the formation was endangered by the safety of Daryl Brooks driving probably true side of that band, but we're still going to react the extreme dance team. It's a little difficult to read, but again, this chart was marked as an exhibit. It's exhibit number 33. If you want it, you can have it in the jury room. The names on this chart will match the names for the extreme dance team on states exhibit 15. All of the girls that were struck and injured as they marched with the extreme dance team. Plus, frankly, this is how you hit it. The victims. You just said you represent the people. Pamela, you're right. Go and talk about the victims. I'm sure she's going to. But that's how you connect the beginning of your argument if you're the state. Lisa, she's been up against way better than me. She is very accomplished. She would do fine. She would do fine. But thank you for the compliment. Some people on the back that were handing out candy or serving in support roles as the uh, unit made its way down the street. The dancing grannies. States Exhibit 54. The formation that they marched in. Who was located where? I hope you're right. In your recollection of how that SUV zigzagged through that group and you can just see the names and match it up to who was injured and killed versus who wasn't. Now, one of the big things in this case has always been, why did this happen? What was he thinking? Why did he do this? Again, those are things I don't necessarily have to prove to you. Intent, you don't have to prove intent. That was in the jury His instructions. Intent, I do have to prove, and I submit without any doubt. Sorry, I didn't mean intent. I meant motive. Sorry. There's overwhelming she doesn't have to prove motive. She does have to prove intent. Intentional act by Daryl Brooks and an act 
of utter disregard for human life. Yes, let's see it. I say that for these reasons, folks. Number one, first and foremost, just stop driving. That's it. It's really that simple. Not one person had to be hurt that day if he would have just stopped driving. Agreed. Uh, you specifically, I'm sorry, can can I be heard? Your objection, sir? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know if I was on mute or not. Um, You're not? You, you specifically said in your jury instructions that intent cannot be, you can't look into someone's mind, I think is what it says, to find intent. So how could that be characterized as someone knowing for sure? Not a proper objection. Or not knowing for sure intent. They have, the state has to argument. prove it. You'll have an opportunity to do that later. Your objection's noted. It's overruled. The state may continue. And if he's smart, that's what he's going to focus uh, on in his closing, his intent. And he apologized. You at the very beginning, remember, our first witness was Sergeant Wanner, the man who was the incident commander for the parade. We put up another map. I think it states Exhibit 1. You can have that if you want it. it shows all the positions of all the police officers and the reserve officers the barricades, the squad cars. How do I know it was intentional? Because even Daryl Brooks told Detective Carpenter, I could tell something was going on downtown. No reasonable person would drive upon this area, see the squads with their red and blues on, see the officers in the street with their bright yellow vests, see all the people milling around, See the, pl the floats lining up and the participants getting ready and not know to drive safely, slowly, and obey officers. The barricades help us prove it was intentional. The police presence help us prove it's intentional. The parade participants help us prove it's intentional. And the parade spectators help us prove it's intentional. I hate to disagree with her, but in my opinion, that does not prove intent beyond a reasonable doubt. She has not, she has not made me a believer yet. If you guys do, that's fine. That's cool. He's definitely guilty of a lot of these 75 or 76 crimes. I just think that her saying that because police officers are there, because the parade was going on, that proves intent. I think he may have some arguments against that personally. Speculation as to what the alleged said. It's called. argument, though. It sir, you can your argue. Your objections noted. It's overruled. This is closing arguments, not the evidentiary phase. Nancy P, just wait. Go ahead. Don't so jinx I, us, Nancy. How can speculation be made to what was saw? Your objections noted. To. It's overruled. Continue, Attorney Opera. Honking the horn. Quite interesting <laughs> that Mr. Brooks asked so many witnesses if they heard the horn honking. So Jess, you actually have to object if you want to preserve an issue for appeal. So sometimes they do not a ton, maybe once or twice, but more in closing than they do in opening. Some of them said they did at the beginning of the parade. Yeah, I heard a horn honk. Most of them said they didn't. I am not on his side, Kevin. The at horn all. honking Come on. cuts both Come ways, on. folks. If he's honking his horn, that means he can see something's in front of him. That means he knows there's an object in the road. You can rely on your common experience in your affairs of everyday life. If you see something in the road and you want to alert the other person to your presence, you will honk. But you do not have the green light to then just keep going if they don't move. He knew they were there. Intent. A lot of people saying it sounds like you're on his side. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. You must be new. I'm not on his side at all, but I do hold the state to their burden to prove intent beyond a reasonable doubt. And I'm putting up a lot of people's reasons why they think intent is proven because I think it's interesting and I think that the state could prove it. I'm just saying I think that they haven't proven intent beyond a reasonable doubt. They definitely proved the reckless endangerment. They definitely, definitely improved the negligent killing or proved a negligent killing or maybe even worse than that, a reckless killing 
definitely prove the reckless killing, but we got to be able to disagree in this chat respectfully. I've skipped one. I'm sorry. Going back to my street number 15, I failed to include the uh, Catholic community. That's just one of the photographs showing the people that will match up to exhibit 15 from the Catholic community of Waukesha. There's a lot of photographs identifying the people that were marching with that group. The parade started. This is the starting point, or at least near the beginning, right? This is the area. We showed some videos of the groups passing by in this area. We heard testimony from four different police officers standing in four different spots near here telling of their four different efforts to stop him. Intentional. Sergeant Wanders back here testified that this red SUV blew by me. I waved both arms over my head. I'm in a police uniform. I have an unmarked squad, but I have my red and blues on. And he blew past me. He gets down here to the corner where Detective Casey is standing. Detective Casey runs out into the street, gets close enough to put his hand on the hook. Donnie, here's the thing, though. If we were all in the jury, lawyer or not, we'd all have a vote. And a lot more of you are saying you see intent. A lot of you saying you don't see intent. Each one of our votes as a juror would matter. And like I always say, you guys are much more likely to be jurors than me. So whether or not you see an intent, you guys might be better off on that than me. I'm, th I'm just speaking legally speaking. I don't think they've proved it yet. That's just to me. A lot of you have found reasons to find intent. And so that's a good indication of what this jury might think. Hood of the car. He keeps going. He comes down, turns onto Main Street, gets in this area of East Avenue to the south and Buckley Street to the north. This is where he encounters Officer Schneider and Officer Buttrin. They each make a separate effort to stop him, and he keeps going. Four police officers. It's intentional. He had plenty of opportunity to just stop. Anywhere along the way, one of the officers testified to it. I think it was Officer Schneider. This was an accident, and he mistakenly wandered onto the parade route after passing all this, and he mistakenly wandered onto the parade route. At any point, all he had to do was stop, they could have paused the parade. They could have moved the barricades and escorted him out. No doubt about that. It didn't. It was intentional. He went on for four blocks. Four blocks. It was intentional. If I was the defense attorney, reached, I would say she keeps saying it was intentional. She keeps saying intent, but they didn't actually prove it. And again, that's when you can mix motive and intent. Again, I know people are going to get upset about this. I They are going to win. Frankly, I hope they win as much as they possibly can. And either way, he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison. Um, but, you know, this is a tactic prosecutors use sometimes by just saying it over and over again doesn't mean you proved it. Speeds of approximately 30 miles an hour. That's intentional. He plowed through 68 different people. 68. No, Girl Scout. Absolutely not. How can you not. hit one and keep going? It's not what How it means. How can you hit two and keep going? How can you hit three and keep going? Didn't phase him a bit. He kept going until he got to the end and there was no more bodies to hit. It's Your intentional. Mischaracterization of the evidence. Noted, overruled. His conduct when he left the parade route, we'll get into this. His flight, his hiding, his panic, his desperation to run. Get the hell out of town as fast as he could before the cops came. That shows his intent. His interview with Detective Carpenter, we spent several hours playing you snippets of that interview. How telling was that? 
Never once did he say any of these things. Never once did he say, like he told you in his opening statement, it wasn't an ac it was an accident. It wasn't intentional. Never said that to Detective Carpenter. No, he came up with some convoluted story about I got a ride out here from a buddy in a tan Kia, and then I left to go meet Erica, and we got into a fight, and then I went back, and the other guy got into a fight, and he was leaving, so I took off on foot. Absolutely nonsensical story. Does not match up with the known evidence in this case. Overruled. We didn't even hear that objection. He never stopped. I didn't even state the objection. Yeah. This is closing argument. You're not going to let him object? She may continue. That's play a mistake. Slide, which is because like you guys mentioned, he hasn't been going overboard with the objections. If he's doing it like this, I would let him object and make his argument. He hasn't been going wild with him, I don't think. Three. Go ahead and play with sound, please. It's so sad to hear the Christmas music. Ugh, it's brutal. Ugh. That was just a snippet that I selected because I thought it really captured the environment that so many witnesses tried to explain to you, right? It's a Christmas parade. People are there with their families, their little kids, their grandkids, their neighbors, their friends, strangers, standing next to strangers. That's what's going on on Main Street. While that's going on on Main Street, this is going on. Remember this? This is the gas station on the corner of Barstow and North Street. While the units are marching down Main Street, entertaining the crowd, Daryl Brooks is driving recklessly. He's enraged and he's arguing with Erica Patterson. Why is this important? This is important because before he even gets to the parade route, this is how he's driving. He drives the wrong way down North Street and then acts like it's everybody else's fault in the world. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. You may continue, Attorney Opper. When he finally pulls into the gas station, he rolls down his window and yells at the driver who's properly stopped at the stoplight that it's somehow that guy's fault that Daryl Brooks is trying to drive the wrong way down North Street. Usually, yes, SG. And from there, the rage continues. She'll give her a little extra time because of we all of his objections. This point. States exhibit number three. Please play. Southern girl, it would be a reckless homicide as their next level down, which still has heavy punishment. I think you can still get less uh, life for that. You can see the pushing match between Daryl Brooks, Corey Runkle, Erica Patterson, and Nick Kirby. Watch this. He turns to get in the car, flips up his hood, and goes and gets in the passenger seat. I'm sorry, drivers. Did you hear that? Somebody correct. And this happens all the time in closing. Like she said, Erica Peterson, and she meant Patterson. You could hear audibly one of the a ASAs sitting next to her, the assistant state attorney sitting next to her saying, the driver's seat. He got in the driver's seat, not the passenger seat, because she misspoke and said the passenger seat, which is a big difference, right? Ashley, I think they would just go to a lesser included of reckless homicide. Dana, this is up to the jury, right? How long are we going to mischaracterize that one? Sir, it's argument. I've heard nothing improper. Your objection's noted. It's overruled. You may continue, Attorney Opper. Thank you. They need to know they can nullify. That's oh. it. He drives off. Did you hear that? 
Did everybody hear that? They need to know they can nullify. Oh, no. Oh, no. Onto the parade route. We'll deal with that later, I guess. From this moment, right here on Exhibit 15, you're watching it. He's enraged. He's angry. Flips up that hood. And he zooms past Sergeant Warner, past Officer Casey, onto the parade route. Now, there's no doubt for the first two blocks, he does not strike anyone. And as we've discussed, some even said he was driving at a reasonable speed initially. By the time he gets past Officer Buttron and Officer Schneider in this area here, of uh, East Avenue, past East Avenue. And clearly once he gets past Barstow, that's where it starts, right? That's where it starts. Nicole White, our first victim, walking with Remax and hot air balloon. Knocks her over, keeps going, runs up and over the backs of Waukesha South Band. Hits the green children spectating on the sidewalk, keeps going, runs over Kelly Grabo and her daughter Adelia walk, walking with Burris Logistics, keeps going, plows through the entire extreme dance team just before the five points, keeps going, hits Deborah Ramirez and her son Isaac spectating. Here we go, getting on to the, the victims. side of the street. Cricket, that depends on your interpretation of intent, and the jury will discuss things like that. We'll talk a little bit about null nullification at a break. Going. Clears the five points area. Hits Jane Kulik. Square on. Causing her to go up on the hood of the car. And then fall off and drives over her body. Ugh. He doesn't stop. He keeps going. Runs through the kids over by the steaming cup. We heard parents testify about little Brinley and Kelsey and Owen. She's getting there. They were standing there outside the steaming cup. They were struck by the red SUV driven by Daryl Brooks. Keeps going. Plows through the grannies in that zigzag fashion, striking most of them, injuring them, killing them, keeps going, gets down here to the end, and goes through the uh, Catholic community. The witness, uh, remember Holly Berg, she testified about that um, mobile gas station incident. She said she was standing down here in this area. She said, I saw 15 to 20 people fly in the air. They look like bowling pins. And when she saw the video, she's absolutely right. It's a terrible description when you think these are human beings, but that's exactly what it looked like. When does the intent exist? It doesn't have to be even for a second. I'm not telling you who set out that morning to cause this carnage. But when he became enraged back here, he didn't give a damn who or what was in his way. He intentionally went on. I'll show you. Did you read that? Motive. That the defendant I don't know why he did this. intended Folks, I don't to kill. Know why? Other than the rage. He's right. You cannot read minds. Neither can I. But the law doesn't require you to. The law gives you a way to reach a conclusion as to what is somebody thinking. And it's right here. Decide and, it based on his acts, words, and statements. Which is exactly what you all are doing. Which is why it's a totally fair discussion. You're all bringing facts and decisions he made and words he said to prove that intent, which is exactly what this jury can do. From all of the facts and circumstances, 
I've already been through many of them. I want to show you what I mean. Look at this. Was there room for him to get out? This is way back at the beginning. This is Officer Buttrin's squad video. Way back at the beginning. That's Buckley Street here that you're looking at. Look at those barricades. Look at the sparse crowd. And there's Officer Schneider in her uh, yellow fluorescent vest on the left side of the picture, about to run into the street and stop him. <coughs> intent. I'm going to play this video for you because folks, for me, this is where it becomes crystal clear. You watch this video, the first thing you're going to see if you direct your attention to the left side of the screen is you're going to see him hit Kelly, I'm sorry, Nicole White. Knock her to the ground and keep going. Now, if that was the end of the story, you may sit here and say, Madam DA, I, I don't know how you conclude intent from that. Maybe it was an accident. Maybe he didn't mean to do it. Interesting. But watch what happens in this video after he knocks Nicole White down. No, and this tell question. Me this does not prove intent. Please play. Andrew, watching the left side of your screen. My only response would be, she's telling us, like, why else would he do it? You know, if what else could he be intending to do besides to kill, but there's nothing really that she's proving that he intended to kill besides, I mean, in my opinion, the best evidence she's given is after hitting them, then he runs over them. That, to me, shows intent. So I'm getting to the intent on the ones that he hits and then runs over as opposed That's to intent, swerving. folks. No reasonable person is going to come across a group of teenagers playing band instruments, drive over them, and keep going. I agree. I think she's getting there. I think she's getting there. Real time. It's That's happening. A still shot of the same thing. You get there with the That's victims. I'm sorry to interrupt your objection, sir. I can you tell the jury what they're supposed to think? It's an argument. Proper argument, your objections noted is overruled. It's, I would argue that it's, it's uh, I would say that it's improper and I move Mr. for Brooks, a mistrial. I made my ruling. I'm going to mute you if you don't. He just moved for his first mistrial. I'm sure we're going to hear that once or twice. Uh, Terry W., the court's going to deal with it with an instruction, most likely. Don't follow the rules. Exhibit one. Mistrial. Exhibit yeah. 152. She heard you. Clearly intentional conduct. It's an argument. She's allowed to make that argument. Clearly yep. intentional conduct. I hear you, Mara. States Exhibit 93. We asked the court to take time to have you go look at this car in person because it's remarkably amazing <clears throat> that this damage was caused by human beings. It's really That's sad to think about. This is an excerpt from State's Exhibit 154. Maybe a little hard to see. A lot of that laying in the front part of this uh, photo are shoes. Remember what Dr. Didritsky said about the shoes and the feet, the scuff marks on the toes and the ankles? Look at all the shoes laying in the street. This is the area at the end when he ran through the Catholic community. All the shoes laying there because of the velocity. Remember, the medical examiner talked about the velocity. It's not just the speed, it's the velocity. The power that these people were knocked right out of their shoes. That's intent. The flight, the hiding, changing his appearance. He had to go through some effort, right? Crawled up in this uh, playhouse, ditched, 
his sweatshirt and his sandal, the other sandal, seems pretty reasonable. He dropped it when he was jumping over a fence. Changed his appearance. Please play. Excuse me. Intent. What's he running from? What's he running from if he's just well, a lost guy with no ride back? To he's definitely intending to get away without getting caught. Definitely intending that. This does this. This is my problem, right? You can't just say intent and show this and say that that shows intent because I don't think it does personally. I think his actions while in the car in the middle of the parade, like a lot of you have said, after the first hit, that's the best argument for intent, in my opinion. To Milwaukee, what's he running from? As there's cops, sirens wailing in the background. Whoops, that was me. So, state's exhibit number 130. Put that up here quickly. <coughs> He can, Gregory, he can forfeit this right as she's told him with his conduct and she's going to give I'm him the chance go to do it. this whole thing, folks. Suffice it to say, after Officer Skolton... What time did her closing start? Do we know? At that intersection at the top, Wisconsin Avenue. And he blew through the barricades there and drove south on West Avenue over to Prospect Court, cutting through the yards and ditching the vehicle on Maple heard all the testimony about the commotion on Maple, the eyewitness testimony from Officer Sailors, off-duty police officer who saw this, saw the defendant, Daryl Brooks, he identified him for you in this court, get out and run from this car, and how we tracked him through the neighborhood. And again, the desperation, whether he had to ask or use veiled threats like, I won't hurt you, but I need your phone. He was absolutely desperate to get out of there until he took refuge in the home of Daniel Ryder. Now, remember the interesting thing, folks. None of these witnesses in this area interesting. knew anything about what happened at the parade. None of them. None of them were there. I, I do think she's got five or ten minutes extra because of his objections, but she doesn't want to use it all. Somebody's going to tip her off to where she is timing-wise. Usually you want to save about 10 or 15 minutes for rebuttal. That's my philosophy, at least when you have an hour. None of them were there. Why is she laughing? I don't get So that. they, some of them tried to help. Some of them didn't. Daniel Ryder did. And it's actually probably a really good thing that he took him in because it stalled, right? It stalled him from keep running, kept him in one place until the cops could close in and get there. <laughs> Now, Mr. Brooks repeatedly asked witnesses who had just watched their loved ones get struck by this SUV if they happened to catch a license plate. States Exhibit 150, there's the front license plate. Definitely a little blurry, but definitely you can make it out. States Exhibit 151, there's the rear plate. States Exhibit 175, there's Daryl Brooks in his music video with the same car and the same license plate. <clears throat> There's the key to the Ford that was found in Daryl Brooks' pocket. There's no doubt Daryl Brooks is the person responsible for this. Because this man in this picture is the same as this man in this picture wearing this sweatshirt and again it's a little hard to see but you can ask for these exhibits in the jury room if you want the photograph you can see this design on the front of the uh, sweatshirt if you look close enough this is a sweatshirt from the playset that, that has Daryl Brooks DNA on it according to the crime lab that's him right there that's Daryl Brooks driving off into the parade that's Daryl Brooks driving in the parade. So this is good. 
That's Daryl Brooks driving in the parade. That is also Daryl Brooks driving in the parade. Yes, as um, and so was that. And he kept asking people about the tints on the window. Well, guess what, folks? You don't need to see the tints on the window when the windows, when the down. windows are rolled down. Yep. And there's clearly one person in that vehicle in every one of these photos. Yep. Knock out all his defenses man. right here. And it's that man. This is good. And it's that man. Daryl Edward Brooks Jr., date of birth, yes. 21, 1982, on his identification card issued by the state of Wisconsin. In all capital letters, Daryl Edward Brooks All capital letters. She's, She's talking to him. She's talking to him now. When they arrested him. So this entire shenanigans that he's presented to you Ooh. through his questioning of witnesses about I'm not Daryl Brooks and that's my name and I don't know who that is and I don't uh, consent to being called that name. It's just nothing but a distraction. I wouldn't. It's I Daryl would, Brooks. I would have done that it's a little man differently. Man drove through the Waukesha Christmas Parade and killed people, injured people, endangered the safety of people. Sorry, is there objection, sir? Uh, Your Honor, with all due respect, I, I would appreciate the uh, the quote unquote uh, language to t what, what does she mean by shenanigans and this and that and the third. <laughs> sir, your objections noted it's over. It's argument, buddy. Continue. Yeah, he doesn't like it when they well, can then, actually call him out. She's telling that back because if that no. was me. She's not going to tone it back, sir. Mr. Brooks, like your that. objection is noted. It's overruled. These are closing arguments. Mute him. There's nothing just, improper. It's mute noted. that it's man. She may continue. I just wanted. I just wanted to be fair. You'll have an opportunity it. to respond, sir. Please let her finish. So I can, I can rebuttal. Yes, you'll respond. Go ahead, Attorney Offer. Thank you. I'm going to conclude my comments with this, folks. I'm going to show you the video a stitched together video of all the carnage caused by Daryl Brooks. And I apologize. It's together. It's together. This is Mute important him. that you know what he did. It's important that you think about the women like Nicole White and Kelly Grabo and her daughter and Jane Kulik who were just there. Talk the about friends, the surgeries, the workers supporting the medical examiner, business, the injuries, the, the teenagers child marching in the band, representing wearing their school colors. It's important. The boys and girls with the Blazers baseball team and their coaches doing nothing more than handing out baseball cards. The young girls in the extreme dance team. Can you imagine how many hours they spent practicing that routine? He drove right through them without a care in the world. The grannies this dancing their way down the street. Said. Perfect step. Every one of them. Catholic community there, as Father Matt said, spreading the light of Christ in the weeks before Christmas. Hmm. He snuffed it out. It's time for Daryl Brooks to stop running. It's time for him to stop lying. It's time for him to be held accountable for his actions. Daryl Brooks cowardly rammed his way through this parade, violently killing and injuring so many people. I'm gonna stop talking and play this video, but please, I ask you to, Add up the evidence. Use the map. One fifteen. I'm sorry, fifteen. You can check off the names. We've covered them all. Walk down that street like we did with you. Return guilty ver verdicts on all counts. Please. Please. Screen back up. No, I need one more. Uh, yes, please. So you're gonna finish by playing a video. Go 
Brianna, the jury can ask questions, uh, not really for clarification, but they can ask for certain pieces of evidence and they, the jury can ask questions, but not necessarily to clarify what does intent mean or something like that. They have to rely on the argument and the jury instructions. People are saying the reaction to the video is horrifying, basically, and you can hear audible crying in the courtroom. So I'll try not to talk over it. Oh my gosh, that state attorney's crying. Is she crying? I can't tell. can hear it audibly. I think it's the victim's families that are in the courtroom, which usually is improper, as horrible as that sounds. Um, Usually they instruct them to not be in for closing if they think that might happen, which, I mean, sounds horrible and obviously can't control that. But you don't want that to affect the jury or create an appellate issue. Brutal. Thank you. Before we continue with Mr. Brooks's closing arguments, I'm going to take a short break. Um, I'll rise for the jury, please. All right. Comfort break. <clears throat> Somebody wrote me a message on Instagram and said, why do they call it a comfort break? She was no. a bailiff, I think, in another courthouse. She said no to Daryl Brooks. I think Jury he was. You know that they can nullify. Oh. You are muted now. He's trying. He's trying everything he can to get a mistrial. Jury should know they could nullify. That's horrible and miserable. And to me, she should. He has absolutely waived his right to come in this courtroom and do a closing argument. She said, "Good job." And it looks like Opera didn't wasn't really excited about her closing, but. Oh, yeah, that was interesting. That was an interesting little back and forth because the state attorney in the middle was like, good job. Opera looked like she was like, ah, I thought I could have done better. And then the state attorney was like, no, you hit everything. You know, you did a good job. That's good. That's a good trial partner. Um, yeah, there's no way I'm letting him back in that courtroom. Absolutely no way. Let's jump to live here so we can skip part of the break. And I've got the sound on for when they come back. Um, so... The court is going to have to instruct the jury on nullification. Um, she's going to have to tell them they have to follow the law regardless of what he says. She's probably going to instruct them that if he argues something like jury nullification or something else improper, she's going to have to mute him. Um, but talking about the closing argument, okay, because that's what 
nullify what meaning just disregard the law and because they feel sorry for him or think it wasn't fair um then they just disregard it and even though that it's been proven by the law and the facts they can think that it's basically also based on his sovereign citizen arguments that he's a sovereign citizen it's the united states law only not wisconsin law there's no plaintiff here and because of all that he can't possibly be guilty um so talking about her closing it was definitely not smooth and polished but that's okay it doesn't have to be smooth and polished everybody's got a little bit of a different style she hit the points that she wanted to hit um i think the video the use of the video and the use of the pictures to say this is daryl brooks this is him here driving windows down knock out a lot of his arguments i think she did a good job proving intent uh somebody asked a uh, lawyer what is needed to prove intent in your view if she could have proved that he actually targeted and intended to kill somebody um some people said he swerved into people most of the um, discussion, I think, was swerving away from people, honking, telling them to move out of the way, which to me is is reasonable doubt of intent. I know a lot of people are going to hate to hear me say that. To me, because he did, there was testimony that he honked his horn, that he did try to get people out of the way, and that he was driving around, swerving around. To me, I think there is some room for reasonable doubt on intent. No doubt about it, reckless homicide. No doubt about it, he caused their deaths. No doubt about it, it was him driving. No doubt about it, he's going to go to prison for the rest of his life. So let me be clear when I say that. I think there would be a discussion in the jury room if I was in there about intent. I could be convinced. I'll just say it that way. I could absolutely be convinced by all of you who are making good points as to after you hit the first person, why didn't you stop? After you hit somebody, why'd you then run over them unless you intended to kill them um, using a deadly weapon, things like that. Um, but uh, people, somebody just said, okay, Peter, you're muted. That's fair. That's fair. If you were the judge, but I do not consent to be muted and you don't have authority over me. Um, but I do think a lot of you guys really more than anything, if we were sitting in the jury room together, you all would convince me. And I probably wouldn't, I don't feel strong enough to probably hold out in this case, um, about this reasonable doubt, but I would, I would like to discuss it if it was, you know, 12 angry men in there as the movie goes. Um, I would have personally focused on his route, Every single time he struck somebody, I probably would have told a snippet of that story. Every time somebody passed away from the from the injuries they sustained, I would have gone through the medical exam report, talk about what part of the car had to hit what part of their body, the surgeries they had, compound fractures, death, bleed outs, blood on the street, um, people seeing their children laying there who were concussed. I and mean, that's probably what I would have gone more so with. Um, personally, I would have done that as miserable as it sounds, I know. Um, but to me, when you explain all of that and explain the aftermath and the carnage of what happened, I think there's no way that the jury doesn't find intentional homicide. Um, yes, Mo, anybody that does want to mute me, there is there is a button you can click that might mute me and that's the like button. Um, but yeah, so I, that's how I would have told the stories. I would have told the stories of the lives they lived and were lost and the, just hearing the Christmas music, how miserable it was. Um, I do think she didn't bore them, which is always important because you can do a six hour closing that really bores them. I think she summarized the charges pretty well. Um, I think she did hit intent, which is the big difficult charge. I think they know they're going to win on most of these uh, issues. So that was smart of her to just hit the hard stuff, try to knock out all of his defenses. Um, and he can't get up there and say um, that the accelerator was stuck. He can't get up there and say, there's a recall in a class action lawsuit on this Ford. He can't get up there and put in new evidence. He can't do that. Um, he, he definitely can't do that. So they're not going to be able to do that. Um, are people going wild in the chat? <laughs> people are saying then leave. All right. Let's keep it, keep it chill in the chat. Um, so to me, I think that the story here is horrific. Um, it is a massacre of sorts. And that's, I think, how I would have um, really argued it. Somebody's asking, what can he say? Uh, man, I missed the comment. Chat's going fast. Um, the He can argue that he honked his horn. He tried to move people out of the way. He... Um, did everything he could to swerve and try not to hit people. Um, they don't know if there were other people in the car. He was never arrested with the car. He can make arguments like that. Uh, he was running away from someone with a knife. I think he can make that argument because 
There are facts out there that there was a report of somebody with a knife. Um, you know, that Kirby threatened him and he was running away from that and he was scared. You know, that that's kind of, I think, what he can do and he can argue. Um, but, you know, what will he argue? We're going to find out. We're going to find out. So I think it was a good closing. I mean, I don't think it was the best closing ever. I think she would probably agree with that, but I don't think it was a horrible closing or anything like that. Uh, thank you, Britta. Uh, couldn't there be a mistrial if he isn't allowed to do a closing? Am I wrong, Peter? No, he can forfeit that right, and it wouldn't necessarily be a mistrial. Um, but I think that she's going to let him try. She may even let him come back in the courtroom. Um, as Kat Yarb said, I think she's going to let him back in the courtroom. I agree. I think she's definitely going to let him back in the courtroom. Um, Marty, I'm in the UK. I don't know any of the victims and my heart is breaking over this. Yeah. And we have a lot of people from Wisconsin. Um, I believe Jackson's dad was, uh, in some of the comments and discussing it on Twitter. I just can't imagine. It's just so brutal. I mean, to think about how you're supposed to be a jury and be impartial on this case, it's really, really hard. Really, really hard. Um, we are not seeing the video uh, because of the content of it is too gra graphic. Um, Pew said, Peter, just say grounds and you're unmuted. It's easy. All right, that should be good. Uh, what will his closing uh, will be makes me nervous. I think he's going to step in it and the judge is going to cut him off. If he's smart, he'll make some arguments first. He'll talk about intent. He'll do all that in the beginning. And then at the end, he's going to get to the sovereign citizen stuff. Sorry, I just hit my mic. He's going to get to the sovereign citizen stuff. He's going to get to the jury nullification. He'll do that at the end to make sure the judge cuts him off so he can preserve what he thinks is a good appellate issue. That's what I think he's going to do. He's going to make some good arguments to start if he's smart. And then he'll get to that stuff at the end to make the judge cut him off. Christian Lee, do you think it'll take the jury long to deliberate? No, I don't think it'll make them long, long to take them long to make a decision, but I think it's going to take longer than just an hour to go through all of these charges. It would be really interesting if they came back as quick as it uh, takes to just fill out the paperwork. That'd be really interesting. Um, I think he'll get five minutes in and then be muted, Mo said. Antelope, how running over 60 plus people could not be intent. However, I would have mentioned swearing to hit as the witness says swerving to hit them yes i don't remember that if, the, if that wasn't there if somebody said he swerved to hit uh somebody did say it looked like he was enjoying it now to me that's pure speculation and inadmissible evidence maybe that's why opera didn't say it again in her closing but i mean that to me could prove intent that he looked like he was enjoying doing it um so that means it was intentional he didn't call. I think another thing is he didn't call 911 for any of these people. He didn't render medical aid to any of these people. I think that can prove he intended to kill them because he didn't try to help them when he had the opportunity to. I may have made that argument. I didn't hear that really come up much. Over under one minute, Austin said, for how long his closing lasts. I'll say over a minute. He hasn't done anything in one minute. Steph Morris, will he get through his closing or be stopped at some point and it will be over? I think he's absolutely going to get stopped at some point. It's just, will he be able to make part of a closing before she stops him? Brita, uh, what happens if he makes any threatening comments toward the judge or others during closing argument tantrums? They will mute him. They will throw him in the other courtroom. Exactly what we've seen already. DB Tunes, Peter, can you give us the definition of jury nullification? Can you provide an example for us? Thanks so much. Lisa DB from Toronto. Um, Jury nullification example, okay? In Florida, about 10 years ago, I prosecuted a possession of marijuana when it was still totally illegal. And in jury selection, I asked, how many of you guys think uh, marijuana should be legal? Everybody raised their hand. We went to trial, and I firmly believe that even if I would approve this guy had marijuana, which he did and was committing a crime, nobody wants to convict somebody from that. So that's a jury nullification. They disregard the law. They disregard something that's illegal because they don't agree with it. They don't think somebody should be punished for it. Um, you can nullif you can get jury nullification based on sympathy if the jury knows what the penalty is and thinks it's just too harsh of a penalty on some of these drug penalties. They can say, even though he did it, we're not going to convict him. It's disregarding the law and doing something opposite to what the law tells you to, which is the opposite of your jury oath because you swear to follow the law. Uh, oh, Mace, is it possible for civil suits from the victims are incoming? I mean, yeah, but what are they going to get? I don't think Daryl Brooks has much. Um, to go after MT. Now, maybe they could say that the parade or the city did not have enough security um, that, you know, they should have been able to stop him. They should have had barricades. The cops should have shot at him earlier. 
Now, there are issues with those kind of claims, but it could be. Thank you, MTQ. Nancy P., he looked smug during most of the closing. Hopefully the jury saw that. I wonder what the jury can see as far as Daryl Brooks, his reactions and what he's doing. I think they can definitely see him at least somewhat because the judge uh, would answer him, would tell him to stop, would say no, things like that. Taylor Flock, keep in mind that due to the graphic nature, we didn't see most of the videos the jury did and intent has a loose definition in Wisconsin, was practically certain to con the conduct would cause death. I agree with you. I agree with you. I think they get there. Uh, Christian Raid, would you have to prove intent instead of a car he had used a gun to shoot his way through a crowd and dangerous weapon, dangerous weapon? I do think that would be different and it would show more intent. I do personally. You can disagree with me and it looks like our boy is back in the courtroom. Can he be forcibly removed? Yes, he can. I'm going to get the headphones back on here so we can hear when they start back up. Tim M. Peter, thank you for the live stream. Good to be able to learn as we watch. Difficult to experience the action without accountability, even knowing that conviction is coming. Thanks for streaming. Thank you, Tim M. Yeah, you guys, a lot of people here, 6,000 plus people, which is awesome. And again, I know so many different options to watch it on today, so I appreciate that. Mara, I fully agree in your assessment and which way you would have gone in closing. Peter, off topic. Props, Peter, for keeping the chat open for all. Southern Girl, I feel he's so mentally unhealthy that his argument will be lost on the jury because it'll end up exploding. It's probably not a bad guess. They are back in. We're just waiting for the, their, the sound isn't on yet. It's usually what they do. Uh, Nancy Eaton is a new member. Ton of new members through this trial, which is fun. It's going to be really fun in our next members uh, video. MTQ. The record should reflect All right, that here we go. Brooks is now present in the main courtroom uh, prior to reopening following the break. I did invite him back into the courtroom and he is here. I trust you are ready with your closing argument, sir. I'm ready to address subject matter jurisdiction as well, too. The request is denied. Just for the record, I was addressing it for both courtrooms here in courtroom number, I think it's 20. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to bring the jury out. Are you prepared to present your closing argument? I would like for you to prove subject matter jurisdiction on the record, Your Honor. I'm not addressing that. Is he even going to start? Addressed already, He's sir, got to start, man. I Come on. Remind you of that. In that written decision that, that I received, uh, well, actually, I didn't receive anything. Was there copies made? Mr. Brooks, I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you prepared with your closing argument? I'm going to have the jury brought out. There is no I'm other in, legal arguments I I'm need to address of, from you at this time. I'm informed of what you're saying. I was merely asking, was there copies made of your, you say a written decision? Sir, my record, my written decision has been filed into the record that is done electronically. You were provided with a written copy previously. Is he not going to do it? Are you asking? That would surprise me. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't have it. As a courtesy, I'll have my clerk print off a copy and provide that to you. Is it proven subject matter jurisdiction? Your objection to the lack of jurisdiction has been noted repeatedly on the record. It is a meritless argument. I've indicated that in my written decision as to why there is subject matter jurisdiction. And I will continue forward with the final stages of this trial. Is he serious? Which I hope include your closing. P.S. Just a little tidbit. If he does not do a closing argument and waves, which defense attorneys have done. My dad's actually done it twice. He won one time by waving his closing argument and he lost one time. So it's 50, 50 shot. Um, the prosecution is not allowed to then do a rebuttal if the defense does not have a closing. So they don't get to get back up. And whatever she had prepared for rebuttal, if anything, we're not going to hear it. Argument and then the final instructions to the jury. I will hope it, it, it proves subject matter jurisdiction on the record too. All right. I will instruct the jury to come out for the record. The written decision is once again being provided to the I defendant. accept for value and return for value this document as it is not based in lawful law. And it does not prove subject matter jurisdiction whatsoever. It refers to a, some complaint 
that was filed in uh here we go the name of a trust not my name were you aware of that your honor mr brooks the jury has been asked to be brought out i mean i've requested that they be brought out they're on their way were you aware Please be of that? prepared with your closing argument she's were you doing her aware best of that, your honor Or is that a tacit agreement that you don't have? This to judge cannot wait for this to be over, and I can't blame her at all. All right. So that is a tacit oh, agreement. Oh, no. He's not going to stop. Record to reflect the jury is coming out. Come on, Daryl. Somebody said she starts another trial, SG. That's brutal. <laughs> it could be true, Adam. Thank you, everyone. Maybe he doesn't Please even know seated. right now. What's going to happen? Give me your vote. Go ahead, sir. Does he close or Maybe not? Begin your closing argument. I'm not ready to begin closing argument. Oh, no. So this is your opportunity to provide your closing argument to the jury. Please start. I I'm, have uh, started the timer I'm in, uh, of one hour. I'm informed of that, Your Honor, but I'm not ready to proceed as I don't understand the uh, reason why the questions asked before the jury was present were not answered. There, there are issues that needed to be addressed outside of the jury, as you always say, which I don't understand why the jury deserves. Mr. To Brooks, this is your let the time arrive. Just let the time arrive. Closing argument to the jury, please do so. I'm informed of that, but the jury needs to understand the truth, their rights, and their duties, as they have not been informed of their truth, their rights. That's fine. Just ignore him. The court has begun let him the talk. instruction process. Uh, I read. Let him talk. Three pages this morning. And into the early afternoon, I have another 30 plus pages to read. Did you inform they will be informed of the law. Did you inform them that they Mr. can Brooks, notify the law? Mr. Brooks, Ugh, not have that, that right makes me cringe. That. Like literally and makes me cringe. Advising you one more time. This is your opportunity to provide your closing argument. Please begin. I intend to when ready. I just want to know if the jury was informed that they can nullify the law. Uh, Mr. Brooks, are, you have they no have right the to power. make that argument to the jury. It's true. They have the power. Oh, all right. I'm going to excuse the jury. They should, they should know that they have the power. Please rise for the jury. So annoying. The utter disrespect and misery that this guy enjoys. And that's the thing is it's like, why are you doing? Like, I mean, I guess he killed multiple people and injured tons of people. So why I'm surprised, I don't know. Um, and, and he is literally just making me, I usually don't do this, most of you know, but like I, I'm i I'm ready to hear the verdict and the, the sentence that I think is coming in this case. And this guy deserves every bit of it. This guy deserves to feel the long arm Thank of the law that he does it. not respect or Mr. recognize. Brooks, you do not have a right to request jury nullification directly from this jury. I direct your attention uh, to the Bajerkas case, B-J-E-R-K-A-S-S, -E that's State versus 163 Wisconsin 2nd 549. While you are not incorrect that the jury has the power to nullify, they don't have the right to do so, and no party has the right to instruct or to request an instruction or to argue jury nullification. This is very complex and confusing. And I understand why you guys have a lot of questions. And there's another super chat that came in about this, which I will read. And we'll talk about what she just said. They, what did she say? They have the power to nullify, but not the right. And we'll talk about what that actually means. It is kind of confusing, but we'll talk about that a little bit more together. seems like we may be ending soon. I am not going to listen to a bunch of jury instructions being read. Just FYI, we'll close this stream and maybe answer some questions. You may talk in terms of fairness in general terms, but you may not go further. You may not argue that the jury should discard the instructions and the law uh, and find you not guilty for that I reason. I agree, you as it should. You may not use the phrase jury nullification. You've done that now at least three times More. in earshot of the jury. 
twice uh, while you were in the other courtroom. I was able to mute half of what you said the second time. And then, of course, you raised that once again while in front of the jury just now. Um, you also indicated you weren't um, ready to give your closing argument. Sir, this is the time has come for you to give your closing argument. If you choose not to do so at this time, then you will forfeit your right to present a closing argument by your conduct. I haven't made any such choice. So you can't coerce me into a constitutional right a waiver when I have not waived the constitutional right. And I will not allow you as a public servant to do that. He will not allow you. Not made a choice. Isn't so that this, nice? The time has come for you. To I'm not present. usually sarcastic and rude to people, but when you say that to a judge, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to co-horse you. Your closing argument. Are you making a judicial determination? Yes. That Just say yes. It's a judicial determination. me a constitutional right. I have not court made such a record. determination as of yet, but you can forfeit your constitutional rights mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. conduct. Law. Uh, Illinois versus Allen, state versus Anthony. Illinois versus Allen does not reference anything pertaining to uh, rights when talking about In closing state statements. state versus Anthony, uh, Illinois the Supreme versus Court Allen. of Wisconsin referenced both that decision uh, when it essentially extended the reasoning or adopted the reasoning of Illinois versus Allen uh, to then find that a defendant could forfeit an important constitutional right by conduct. In State versus Anthony, it was not the right to be present in the courtroom. It was the right to testify. Okay, so no, none and of those the reasoning... that you just named have anything to do with the closing arguments, Your Honor. You, you've used Illinois versus Allen repeatedly to when it comes to me being removed from the courtroom. Not one time did it bring up anything dealing with a closing statement or a closing argument. So how is that same uh, statute being used for something that it doesn't even refer to or pertain to? I think you're right, Nicholas. And a lot of people have been saying this. This is his last 15 minutes of life, not just fame. Mr. Brooks, the Allen decision, Illinois versus Allen, and the Anthony decision, which is State versus Anthony, are two examples of cases where a defendant lost a very important constitutional right because that right was forfeited by the conduct of that particular defendant. And that was to be present in trial, correct? The right to present a closing argument is no different. Because it is not evidence, um, it could be said that it doesn't even rank as high as the right to testify, which Definitely. is guaranteed by the constitutions. Which Definitely. I was denied the I'm right not to, prepared to be make able that to ruling to here yet today, but I will tell you this, sir. The time has now come for you to present a closing argument. There will be no further delays. It's I not will a delay. not be taking any further um, adjournments for you to prepare. You were advised yesterday that this court would proceed today with instructing the jury and with the parties making their closing arguments. And you made that while it violating up, my constitutional sir, right. Sir, please don't interrupt me because well, you've now you interrupted did. me a couple of times. No, once. So let's Twice. make that correct. Once. That's the third time. Okay, now you can say So, two. Mr. Brooks. <sighs> he thinks it's a joke. i you yet again. The time has now come. To being caught. Nicholas is correct. He, it's a joke to him at this point. It, imagine being one of the victim's families in that courtroom right now listening to this. It's another yeah, interruption. The time has now come for you to present your closing argument to this jury. And you were brought back over to this courtroom for that purpose. I'm going to let them That's know. That's another interruption. No, I'm going to let them know that they have rights and that they should be told informed of the truth it's not me are trying you telling to give. me sir that it's you not are going trying to, to give dis let me ask you a question Hello. i'm not trying to give any sir, jury you're interrupting me and you haven't let me finish so are you telling me that you are going to disregard my very clear directive to you to not bring up the topic of jury nullification that's not what i said I'm asked, that's why i'm asking you i don't understand that question because that's not what i said sir you may not argue jury nullification I'm to going this to jury. inform them of the truth. So you're going to inform them that they have the power of jury nullification. 
they do have the. You just said on the record that they have the power. For, Sir, uh, I direct your attention. You just said that. Again. Did you not just say that, Your Honor? Sir, you said jury, I couldn't instruct them. The jury on has that. the power, but not the right to nullify. Right. A you said party, the power. You said the listen power. Listen to me, sir. You're interrupting me once again. MVD. I think when we see the end result, people are not going to want to mimic what he did. Yeah. So I'm going to inform them that they have the power. Are you telling me, sir? I'm not you telling you no such to thing. I, I just told you what you just said. My directive to you to not raise the issue of jury nullification during your closing argument. That's not what I said. You just read and said that they have the power to. That's what you just said, Your Honor. Sir, State versus Vijerkas says and stands for the proposition that although the jury has the power of jury nullification. Ah, they have no, the power. No. Here we go. This is great. So, Nicole. Here we go. She's going to explain to you. Jury nullification means disregard the law and render a verdict that's in opposition to the law. My explanation is if you don't think marijuana should be illegal, but it is in your state and you're on a jury and you, they want to convict somebody of marijuana, you say no, you're disregarding the law and going against the law. But the judge is going to explain it right here. Uh, Nanny B, she's trying not to trample on his constitutional rights. They just, he just refuses to, to work with her. Party has the right to argue for jury nullification. I'm not arguing for it, Your Honor. In I just want them case, to be informed. The, I just want them sir, merely to be informed. You can That's call it. it informing, making them aware. Yeah, they, should, they should be aware of You are of the not rights. allowed to make them aware of their power to nullify. That how is an improper them, argument. Your Honor, how can I not inform them that they have a power? Uh, Daryl, it's kind of like... Let me just speak at you for a second. Don't interrupt me. Um, it's kind of like a lot of your prior crimes that they don't know about. Um, it's kind of like you hitting your girlfriend with her car in a similar manner to the crimes you're accused of in this case. Those are all things that are true and that the jury probably would like to know and may affect their decision making that they're not allowed to because of the rules of evidence, because of the rules in the criminal justice system. Jury nullification is the same thing. It exists, it can happen, but you can't ask them for it. It's just how it works. Continue. How because can I not, not inform right them of a power that they have? Sir. I'm not giving a new jury instruction. That That's not what I'm arguing. There is no jury instruction for jury nullification, yeah, I'm sir, not, I'm because not, it's not allowed. I'm not attempting to give them a new jury instruction. I'm merely attempting to inform them of the power that they have. No, you don't need a criminal verdict to, to have a civil case. No, they could have already had one if one existed. That's not against the law. I'm advising you one more time. You may not raise the issue of jury I'm going, nullification I'm going to, I'm going before to this inform jury. inform them of the power that they have. No, you're not. not you are them, telling me that I'm not you giving are them a jury instruction. I'm telling them about jury nullification. That's, that's what I hear you saying. That's not what I said, though. Don't mischaracterize what I'm saying. You just read and said that they have the power. They have the power to do that. So how how is informing them? It's an inherent them, power that they have. They are not to be instructed on it. That I'm, is very clear in the law. In addition honest. to, no, let me finish. In addition to the case that I just cited, I'd cite to you uh, from the jury instructions, uh, the law note on jury nullification 705. Um, what that says, sir, is... I'm not going to read feel it this. all. It's many, many pages. But the bottom line is it is improper for a court to allow. She really doesn't need to do this, if I'm being honest. I think it's fine that she is, and it's going above and beyond, and she's doing her absolute best, and she's she is definitely protecting his rights, but I think it's a little too much to debate, have an appellate debate with him about what precedent applies in this case and why. She can say, okay, so you're saying on the record you're going to ask the jury to nullify? I'm not letting you make a closing argument. Let's move to the end of the jury instructions and then let him appeal it. And that's it. A defendant or a defense attorney to make an argument or make the jury aware um, that they have the power to nullify a verdict. And your honor, you just added this last night. That's why I had to sit there for an hour in the holding cell and wait for you to change the whole paperwork because I brought that up. So you never intended for this to even be an issue. Mr. Brooks, it never was brought up. If you but think then I when I raised the issue, you your honor, think let me that finish. I'm not prepared to deal with an argument on jury nullification. I didn't say I, that's missed, not what I said. Ah, that's not what I said. In all fairness, that's not what I said. I love the that. Should 
accurately. She's a lawyer. Let's not forget. She's a lawyer. She's like, sir, if you thought I wasn't prepared for this, I was born for this. Oh, that's great. That was good. Reflect that you were kept in that holding cell Why was I kept so in that here? my clerk could finish adding a jury instruction that was not there. Six verdict forms and it's times two because there's a guilty and a not guilty okay. for each. No, let me finish. Sir. So how did, so how did me. I have, me why finish, did I have to sit here for that where I could have just went to uh -uh. my cell and had it delivered? Uh -uh. We had this Mr. at the Brooks. end of last at the end of last night before you call recess. I'm not going to debate we had a that whole, topic with We you had a further. whole conversation about Mr. Brooks, you me are bringing up about the jury nullification. Disregarding this court. You, re we you go can roll your eyes Here at me we, because all you want. It's ridiculous, Your Honor. You, you, you just stated that they have the power to nullify would you like, law, if you would like, but then I, I said, read this to you, sir. The part of why? the case that's important. He's not going to agree with you. Get a word in edgewise. I'm trying my best not to remove you to the other courtroom, but that is oftentimes what I need to do in order for this court to make a full Just record do it. without you interrupting me. But you need to be fully aware that you may not raise the issue of jury nullification in front of this jury. He told you he's it going is to not five times. An allowable argument or an advisement or making them aware. However, you want to describe that, sir, whatever verbiage you want to put in front of it, you may not do so. And this court has the power and the authority to limit what you say to this jury, even in a closing argument. And if you're telling me through your conduct, through your words, that you are going to disregard that direction, you will forfeit your right to present a closing argument. Under what lawful law? Under State versus Anthony. That's, that, it doesn't refer to that. State versus it, Anthony it may doesn't. not have dealt with. It hasn't dealt with closing right arguments. to a closing argument, sir, it, but the reasoning you just said nonetheless it right there. is no. fully applicable. No, you can't, the more you can't general change the law, Your Honor. You can't change the law. That's practicing law from the, the bench. Law, sir, but the general principle. I know you used to be in legislation, but you can't practice law from the bench. Sir, I'm you not can't practicing do that. law from the bench. I you are if you're changing, if you're, ch Your Honor, I'm not you're making... attempting, you're attempting to make a, 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 a separate case pertain to something here that it that, that doesn't even pertain to it. It has nothing to do with a closing argument. Nothing that you just so, named. Not Mr. Illinois Brooks, versus Allen. I would like to make a record. Would you please show the courtesy and respect? I will, you Your Honor. That? I will. All right. So looking at the Anthony case, all right, and that case starting at Head Note 7, paragraph 54 says the following, and you need to let me get all the way through it. We have recognized two distinct ways in which a defendant may give up his rights, waiver and forfeiture. State versus Pino is the first citation that they reference. Waiver is the intentional relinquishment or abandonment of a known right. Multiple citations there, I won't repeat them all. Waiver typically applies to those rights so important to the administration of a fair trial that mere inaction on the part of a litigant is not sufficient to demonstrate that a party intended to forego that right, state versus Soto. Forfeiture, on the other hand, often involves the failure to make the timely assertion of a right. That's a cite to the Dina case and Olano. Rights that are subject to forfeiture are typically those whose relinquishment will not necessarily deprive a party of a fair trial and whose protection is best left to the immediacy of the trial, such as when a party fails to raise an evidentiary objection. However, there is a second aspect of forfeiture, doing something incompatible with the assertion of a right. State versus Vaughn. Why is she doing this? I don't get it. 129, citing Illinois versus Allen. He doesn't know what that means, uh, citing NS Illinois versus Allen. 337. They went on, the court, that is the Wisconsin Supreme Court in Anthony. As previously noted, we have held that the right to testify is subject to waiver, not forfeiture, insofar as a defendant's inaction in asserting the right is concerned. We now conclude that the right to testify may, in appropriate cases, be subject to forfeiture for conduct 
incompatible with the assertion of the right is at issue. They go on to discuss Allen, which was not a right to testify, but was a right to be present. And yes. I am utilizing the guidance from Illinois versus Allen and state versus Anthony. It directly guides this court that a defendant may forfeit a right by conduct by doing something incompatible with the assertion of a right. In this particular case, you are very clearly telling no, I would me not. You are going to disregard. Yes, he what clearly I told, told you, you that about notifying the jury about nullification. You have absolutely no right to raise that in front of the jury. It is improper. And unless you're willing to tell me you will honor this ruling of mine, then you will forfeit your right to present a closing argument. That is my ruling. I object to that ruling, Your Honor. I object to that ruling. Are you willing to make a closing argument, sir, that does not reference jury nullification? I'm going to inform, inform the jury of their power. Again, I never stated that I was making a new jury instruction. I never sta in, uh, stated anything like that. And every case law that you just stated made no reference to closing arguments. It was all pertaining to uh, being present for the proceedings of trial and for testifying. So Not what one I'm time did you, you, hold on, I let, Your Honor, with all due respect, I let you make your record. I didn't interrupt you. Go ahead. Not one case law that you just cited made any reference whatsoever to a closing argument. Not one. So how is me merely informing the jury of the power and the rights that they have? How is that a forfeiture of being able to give a closing argument? Well, in addition to the cases I've just cited, sir, I'd also point you to state versus the jerkus 163 wisconsin second at 549 well, that's a court of appeals cases, case from 1991 that is the first published appellate decision in wisconsin to consider directly several issues relating to the jury nullification issue in that particular case i don't know why the judge is doing this clearly she does not need to do this that the defense counsel in that case was allowed to talk in terms of fairness in general terms, but not to go further and could not argue that the jury quote should disregard the instructions and the law and find her not guilty because it seems fair. That's a description of jury nullification. To use the words jury nullification would run afoul even more. And so I am telling you that given my inherent authority in controlling the mode and order of this court to ensure courtesy, decorum, and civility, and to ensure that this jury is presented with arguments that are proper under the law. I am hereby telling you I am in, in creating a rule for your closing argument that you may not raise the issue of jury nullification in any way. Your Honor, hold up. Hold up now. Oh, his mask is off. Look I'm out. I'm the only one that has to be See the real him. rules for, for closing arguments, but not the prosecution. Yes, they're I not allowed to talk about jury nullification either. Mr. Brooks, I'm squarely faced with your defiance regarding the issue of jury nullification. It's that is defiance. requiring it's me to address this issue and to tell you very Honor, expressly I that that is the rule I vehemently for your object closing to that. argument. I vehemently object to that. Your objection is noted for the record. But May I ask for a legal reconsideration of your ruling? That request is denied. May I uh, respectfully ask for a uh, matter of fact, I reject that ruling and take exception to that ruling. Congrats. You reject it. That means a your... lot. For the record, may I request a legal or factual basis for your ruling? No. Not one pertaining to... He, she's already given it. Being present in the courtroom. Judge, you just read five cases. We all had to listen to it. You've made a record. That's the legal and factual basis for your ruling. Just move on. Or testifying. 
one that specifically talks about correct a closing argument she doesn't need to point to a case that says that oh this is frustrating all of those requests are denied noted and will not reconsider good i've put my findings and my reasoning on the record and i stand by that record for Thank the record you. may i respectfully request a written judicial finding of facts no and inclusion of law nope 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 denied Thank you. That's all she for should say record, from now I on. Respectfully move for interlocutory declaratory appeal on this matter. I'm nope. not the form for which an appeal would be sought, sir. I cannot well, answer that. You you referred to it before. You would need so to direct confused. your appeal to I'm a confused, Your to Honor, a court of appeals, not this court. No, this is. I'm supposed to be in this admiralty court. It's gone too far today, in my is, opinion. Is the if if we're under Article Three. And we should be in common law court. That hasn't even been addressed. If we're in a common law court or an admiralty court, that's a baseless argument, sir. I have my I have my fidget fact, thing based on what law and fact. That's what I'm going at. Atlas. Based on what law and fact. It's really really annoying to be honest with sir, you, sir. I intend to bring this jury out and give you I'm an opportunity I'm informed of that. to present a closing argument again. Yeah, you already violate. Please also, let me, listen, sir. You're interrupting you me yet rule. again. You just tried to put me under a rule that no one else was put under. <laughs> the circumstances. I wish you would just say, Mr. Brooks, you're wrong. The state was under that same rule. They are not allowed to argue jury nullification. State, in your rebuttal, you're not allowed to argue jury nullification either. Fair rules. Same rules for everybody. Require that I implement this rule, sir, given your the stubborn defiance don't. on your the honor, issue of jury nullification. You can't place me under certain rules and not place... The prosecution under the same rules. So the circumstances of this case and your insistence on arguing jury nullification has resulted in this court creating this rule. I haven't argued it. I said that I wanted to inform the jury of their power. I never once said, I'm going to make an argument. I'm going to give them a jury instruction. You may not advise them that. or make them aware in any way that they have the power. And why not? Jury why can't they be informed of their power? Because it would violate the Bajurkas decision, sir. It seems that decision. way, Joan, Joanne. All right, sir, I am going to bring the jury out. And I'm going to inform them that they have the power. And if you do that, I will dismiss the jury, and I will declare that your right to present you a closing do that. argument Under what has been law? forfeited. Based Thank you, Judge. You've said it. You said if he says the jury nullification thing, he forfeits his closing argument. Therefore, that is exactly the same thing as him waving it when they show up and walk in. Just let him do that so we can be done. Depon, I make a oral, how I've outlined I'll make a oral that today. motion for... Uh, I'm not going to declare that at okay, this point fine. because I want to see what you will do. Make your oral motion. Uh, but if you raise the issue of jury nullification, I will immediately dismiss the jury. You will forfeit your right you can't to do that. Uh, present a closing under argument. Under what lawful law can you... And then if you continue to interrupt under what me... what lawful law... You will be removed to the other courtroom as I complete the So I'm being held in contempt again. Is it civil or criminal? Your Honor, go ahead. I apologize. May I ask the court to consider perhaps an alternative and I fully respect the ruling the court has this is made and I understand the basis for it. We all know the defendant in his petulance will say jury nullification in the first three seconds the jury's in the Ooh, in his petulance. Objection the to that. Yeah. Proper I don't thing think to do I, I think you're asking. Stop interrupting I don't think I should be talked down to. <laughs> Allow him to make his closing argument. I will object if he misstates the law. You can instruct the jury to disregard any misstatements of the law. And we continue in that fashion, if possible, for a reasonable amount of time. And if it becomes to the point where there's no reasonable, interesting, legal, credible argument that's being made, then the court can decide as to whether or not he's forfeited his right to a closing argument. But we could at least try. See, I wouldn't do that. To because that you're just giving him an inch court, telling the jury to disregard and instructing Mr. Brooks to move on to the next topic. We could try to allow him his opportunity to provide a closing argument. If that's unworkable, then I think this record will be very clear as to the efforts of this court. Yes. She's like, and I think, enough. Um, there, there is materials in the bench book, or I'm sorry, the jury instruction 705 um, that talk about 
a jury instruction. This court could even give um, telling the jury that they are not at liberty to disregard the law, but we're not going that far yet because um, frankly, you have told them and you will tell them that closing arguments are not evidence. And uh, wow, I think they will abide by that. So I know she knows going she's going to gonna win. Fire. She just wants to get there. It's um, a good question, Stevie. Effort for the court to to allow this to um, allow Mr. Brooks to try and proceed, but I think we should try that or something similar. Yeah, to that. something to let it let it go. Let's go. Next step, or else we will continue at this pace. Tonight. For the record, may I respectfully request a written judicial finding of facts and conclusion of law on this issue, Your Honor. Denied. For the record, may I respectfully move for interlocutory declaratory appeal on this matter. I'm not the court to address that. For the record, may I move to stay these jury's walking in. This instant matter is adjudicated Here we go. by a court of competent jurisdiction, which this court has no All subject right. matter jurisdiction. Here we go. Denied. Under uh, based, on jury, based on what law or fact? Jury's coming in. What law or fact? Because I'm going to inform the jury of their power. They deserve to know. What kind of, and I think Nicholas is right. I keep coming back to that. He's not, he doesn't actually believe this, but like, why would he think anybody would listen to this and be like, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. The judge is trying to not let us do things. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Go ahead, Mr. Brooks, your closing argument, please. Here we go. Good afternoon. It's been a long day. Here we go. First off, I'd just like to start by uh, letting you guys know that... Uh, Court appointed one. It's a lot of information that you guys should be privy to, I believe. And uh, one thing that I believe that you have not been privy to is the truth of your rights and your duties. Being the jury, um, the fact that you and you alone have the power, not uh, well-prepared DAs with well-prepared and clearly rehearsed uh, speeches and, and exhibits and a lot of theatrics. I am um... not the judge. You and you alone have the power. You and you alone decide what is true and what isn't true. He's right so far. You should be informed that you have the power to nullify any law that you don't agree with. Objection. Move to strike this statement. Sustained. Objection. I will strike from the record the last statement made by the defendant. The jury which will is, disregard it. Which is clearly what I've been saying. Probably not, Kelly, but they know he's losing. I think that's that's I the point. I that not only is it fair but it's essential that you be privy to all knowledge, not knowledge that certain people feel that you should hear and shouldn't hear, disguised under the color of law. Um, the fact that the matter is, just like I did with the uh, my opening um, statements. I don't have a well prepared or rehearsed speech. Um, I didn't look in the mirror and say certain points to myself over and over again to make sure I have them right or, or anything like that. I've chosen to speak from the heart in my opening statements and now I'm going to speak from the heart.
What you won't hear me do is argue facts. And the reason you won't hear me argue facts is because I believe that it takes away from what should be recognized. The tragedy of this event, it should be recognized. <clears throat> Trying to argue facts of this, facts of that, I'm not going to waste your time doing that. It's a little emotional. I apologize for the long pause. It's hard to keep everything together emotionally. Uh, and honestly, I don't believe that I have any more tears left. Uh, it's, it's been a hard year. Sympathy argument for the families, mostly, um, and that should not be lost on, on anyone. It, it shouldn't be taken away. Um, I said it before, and I'll say it again. It's a lot of people that are are healing, that are attempting to heal. that opens the door to talk about uh, forgiveness for a little bit. Um, Agree, MVD. With every healing process, there comes a, a forgiving process. Um, it's not an easy thing for anyone. Uh, what you've been hearing from the prosecution, and not to take anywhere with, uh, anything away from them, but let's call it what it is. You've been hearing a lot of rerun. Same things over and over and over. No different than when you turn on the radio and you first hear that song that you don't like when you first hear it, but they play it so much that eventually you start saying it the words to yourself before you even realize it. And then you sit and you go, I hate that song. Why am I singing it? That's what's been happening. Rerun over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Attempting to make things stick in your head that simply aren't true. Why do I say what am I saying? I say, look at the testimony. Oh, sorry. People are telling me I'm muted. The thing from Let me pause it again. It's, it's, it's kind of what I said about intent. They said intent over and over and over again. Doesn't make it true. That's kind of what he's saying about, you know, that song you hate. Interesting. Here it's been intent, 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 intent. Ooh, that was what he was going for. Interesting. We all know what's been said. We all know the picture that's been painted. Even the prosecution said themselves. How can you look in somebody's head and say, this is what they intended to do? His whole argument is about intent. It's interesting. You know, for, for a year, I've, I've sat and gone through this. Uh, feeling so powerless. You weren't powerless that day. You had all the power that day. Let other people run with the narrative. That would be my rebuttal. He wasn't powerless that day. He had all the power to just hit his brakes, and he didn't hit his brakes. Yes. It's 
sitting back helpless while other people paint a picture that has zero truth. Zero. Zero I truth? I about healing myself, tragedy, pain, all that. A lot of it, there's no need to get into. I, myself, in my own life, have had to do a lot of healing. As a man with children myself. Sympathy argument, but usually that's objectionable, but the state's not going to object if they don't have to. I find it hard to believe that anyone who's really had conversations with me, spent time around me, would think for one second that this is an intentional act. I've never heard of someone intentionally trying to hurt someone while attempting to blow their horn. While uh, attempting to alert people of their presence. Which brings me to more information that I believe that you should have been privy to. All right, let's hear it. And I'm sure that the prosecution will beg to differ. But the fact of the matter is... The vehicle in question... Was part of a, of yeah, yeah, it was part of a class action. We knew he was going to bring this up. Objection. Vehicle in question. Actually, 2008, 2009, and 2010 of that model was in fact recalled. Objection. Misstatement of the facts. Facts not in evidence. Was in it's fact. Sustained. Yeah. Was in fact recalled. Cut him off was in fact a class action lawsuit against Ford Objection. for those That's model evidence, for those right. model vehicles. The you see how calm the state's being? That's exactly how you should do it. So the state doesn't or the jury doesn't even think it's a big deal. And again, they know that nobody testified to that. He's just making those arguments. And this is what he could have tried to testify to if he wanted to, um, if you want to take the stand, but you cannot testify at this point now. Information that you should have been privy to that you weren't allowed to be privy to. Why? I don't know. That information, malfunctioning throttle bodies. Mr. Brooks, move on. It's information that you should have been privy to. Vehicles that malfunction and accelerate not being able to be stopped it's not true. true. It's information. Wait, it's information. Go ahead. It's not even what statements. What the class action says. Facts not in evidence. It is. It's a misstatement. Statement when I have the information. Oh gosh. Mr. Brooks, move on. This is what almost information. almost every defendant that represents themselves and does not testify tries to do this in closing argument. So he's not the first. And that I feel like you needed to know. You should have known. Information that was taken away from you. So that's his, that's his thing. He's like, you don't know all this information. That's why you have the power to nullify. You should nullify. I guess that's where he's tracking. I don't know. We'll see if he connects the dots. Why? To prove a case? Information that you definitely should have been privy to. (laughs) 
he could have said he knew about the class action, but probably not explained exactly what the details were. Like he couldn't hit the brakes or the car wouldn't stop because he's not an expert. The defendant has an utter disregard for human life. Utter disregard for human life. Not realizing that they're talk about it, talking about someone that has, again, has children. Talking about someone that watched their children come out of the womb and be born into this world, cut the umbilical cord, held them before their mom even did. It's facts, not evidence. I'd object to that. Moments that I'll never forget. It's asking for sympathy. And yet they say disregard, utter disregard for human life. What you did that day. It's a good point. Marty, no. Would be double jeopardy. They made reference to a rage. As if they were, or if this particular DA was right there, standing right there. As if this DA is a psychiatrist. I say to myself, what, rage, what do you mean rage? How can you characterize that? How can you have the audacity to diagnose what someone's brain is? It, it, where it's at, what it's thinking, why it thinks the way it does. DA makes references to blocks of no one being injured, but then says it's intentional. You add that up with the supposed rage, the supposed intent to harm and kill. And it doesn't, doesn't kick in until well within blocks. How was he able to stop and back the car up Maybe into that parking me, spot? But I would think if I was characterizing someone with this intent to kill and, and, this, and this, this rage and this anger. Then why weren't people immediately harmed? Why was someone with intent to kill and rage try to alert people of their presence? Repeatedly honked their horn. You, you heard a detective, if you recall, testify that the vehicle that he observed was not only honking his horn, but was not speeding. So where does this rage kick in? Where does this insatiable <laughs> intent to kill kick in? They speak is someone who's known yes. someone for years. Yes. Which brings me back to the vehicle. What if the vehicle couldn't stop because of the malfunction? Objection, facts, not evidence. What if what if the driver of the vehicle was unable to stop the vehicle? There's no what evidence of that. Back, what if the driver may have panicked? No evidence of that. Facts, not evidence. It's not a proper argument. Does that make the driver a, a crazed or not crazed, a, 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 a rage? Does that make the driver in a rage and intent on killing people? D 
DA played a exhibit 17. You don't see anyone struck in that vehicle. On that exhibit, you don't see anyone struck. Was someone who had this intent to kill. There you go, Patty Joe. It's a good point. As as she says. If that was their intent, wouldn't they have taken the opportunity to hit as many people as they could? It's good. It's a good argument, Target I think. People, mow down people. Against intent. It's a good argument against intent. Reference was made to this vehicle, the damage. Says this was all caused by bodies, but then later turns around and says, hits barricades and other objects. Ooh. Her testimony about hearing loud interesting. crashes and, and, and things of that nature, but. DA wants you to believe it's an interesting argument, except for the fact that you're not arguing you didn't hit all those people. That's the problem is it is an interesting argument that they said it was from bodies, but they also said he hit barricades and other things. But dude, you did hit 70 people. So he did. This all came from people. Evidence doesn't support that. So I go back to trying to wrap my head around everything that's happened in the last year. Praying for those families, praying for the people that tragically lost their life because that should not be lost either. We agree. The fact that there was lives lost and all the emphasis has been put on the alleged defendant. And the people have been disregarded. Makes me wonder, does the DA even care about those people? What? That's what, what's what we're here to do, bro, is give them some justice by convicting you. There's been prayers going up every day. Been suffering on both sides. It's been threats, hate mail. Because of the narratives that's been put out there, the misconceptions that have been put out there, the lies that been put out there. Lies that have caused my children not to be able to go to school. To be bullied. For my mother to have to leave her home and stay at a hotel because she's afraid for her safety. Because she gets hate mail shoved through her, her mailbox. I hope so, CC. I this would not let him make these arguments because they're all about sympathy. And what's been equally hard Not only having to answer questions from my daughter, who was seven at the time, my baby, my baby girl, who was seven at the time, is now eight.
attempting to ask, answer her questions that she's asking and still continue to shield her from what she sees, what she hears. Having a newborn son that I haven't even been able to meet. I haven't been able to hold, touch, kiss. All improper sympathy arguments. This is what he means by jury nullification. Forget about what he did navigate. because you feel bad for him. Everything that comes with this whole situation I still attempting to wrap my head around it. I can't honestly say how many times I've sat in my cell, especially during lights out alone, where it's just you. And just there. <laughs> Praying and asking myself, how could this happen? Facts, not in evidence. Not just for the people. But for everybody involved, the community too. How could this happen? How? The hardest questions you can ask is those that don't have an answer. No matter how much thinking you do, no matter how much you try to. Theoretically, Mark, it can. Look at it from different perspectives and listen to other outside perspectives and listen to people that you trust and that you love. Still coming up with nothing. But to think for one second, one, one, one question I never had to ask was if this was intentional. That's something that never even I never asked once. So he was saying like, cause I know it was, I'm going through my head trying to figure out how this could possibly happen. And you know, what happened to the car? Was there something wrong with the pedal? Did I freak out? But I never questioned was not intentional. So I mean, he's basically giving up on 61 or whatever, 71, 70 of the charges that he lost. Right. That's what it feels like. As a matter of fact, it never even crossed my mind to even attempt to ask myself that because I know it wasn't. And my and guess is he's going to take his entire his hour. Probably doesn't show. Maybe hard to believe. Trust me when I say no one outside of the families that had to go through this, no one's heart is more in pieces than mine. So again, I go back to all these exhibits.
I don't know how much longer. Anybody Go keep a time? Everything that's been shown, everything that's been testified to. <laughs> everything you've heard during this whole process, this trial. And again, I say the same thing that I said earlier. The same thing I said in opening statements. I'm not reading from any paper, any books. Does that make it true? Everything you've heard in opening statements, everything you're hearing now is from right here. Everything. Does that make it true? I don't get it. <clears throat> you have the decision. Yes, they could. You and you alone. All of you. You have the decision. I'm sure you've taken a lot of notes during this process. Some days are longer than others. A lot of movement in and out of the courtroom. Yeah. For various reasons. Yeah. Remember the power that you have. The power to nullify, that's what he means. No, for one second, let it be taken away from you. Does he think they're with him? I don't get it. Like, he thinks they're with him. I can never understand the position of sitting on the jury in, in something of this magnitude. So I, I, I'm sure there's a lot of pressure. It's a good point, MVD. It I does feel really long. And I've got to take a leak. So I'm bouncing around here I'm like... Uh, the right decision. I agree, Cricket. I don't think he's going to stop till the judge makes him. It's almost like that, um, that message. Well, not message, but that writing. We're in our vehicles, and it, you got that rear view mirror, and it said things are closer than they appear. But it's also another way of saying sometimes things aren't as they appear. It's a good point, and that's true. <laughs> Everybody's so nice. They're like, just go, man. Just go. <sighs> can't speak for anyone else but me myself I believe in Jesus Christ me too so I was raised that's what I believe in something went wrong man I don't know about that six perfect. but he's gonna get his full life that's for sure I try every day to make sure that I acknowledge him. That's why every time I step in this courtroom, I have my Bible with me Ugh. everywhere I go. Yeah, none of us noticed you were trying to use that as a prop. I read it on breaks. It's totally improper argument. 
I, I read it on breaks in case you guys can't tell. I have it open all the time on my desk. It's like he's just now ex admitting what we all knew was the truth and him trying to use that, and it's a joke. It's not something that started at the beginning of this incident. This is something that yeah. has been instilled in me since I came out of the womb. Facts, not in evidence. This is how my family lives their life. This is how we was raised. mistakes that I myself have made in my life, I've made peace with, with God. Made peace. I'm happy to say that my conscience is clear. conscience is clear how is that possible and because i believe i trust him with my life <laughs> nobody will never know why it was his will for this to happen A lot of lives were changed that day, mine included. This is true, Carol. Do it to himself. God's way is not our own. It's not in there. No matter how much sometimes we want to question, we have to have faith. I don't even get, I mean, this is just, I guess he's grasping, he's reaching. <clears throat> All right. I'll let it ride. I'll be right back. Keep it rolling. Look inside yourself. Look inside yourself and make the right decision. inside your heart. You have everything in your hands now. everything. <laughs> Don't let the smoke and mirrors take away your power. Don't let the theatrics 
take away your power. Each and every one of you has a decision. It's right. Make the right decision. hard to think about my younger kids getting older and at some point having to explain everything to them <coughs> kids don't stay kids forever Nowadays, kids is frankly a lot smarter than we were when we was kids. Uh, I just heard this last part. So he is literally admitting and knowing that he is going to get convicted and go to prison. He knows that is true. Say that much. I got a letter the other day. Facts, not in evidence. Object. This My is going on daughter. forever. And she's still learning cursive right now. So she's the best writer when it comes to cursive. She'd rather print. She said that. And this is from the letter. She said that. They're letting him get away with it, so he's doing it. Why are people saying all these mean things about you? I haven't read the rest of that yet letter yet. Probably true, Patty. I'm sure it does make him sad. I mean, that would make anybody sad, but it's not like they're saying it out of nowhere. That's not the dad I know. Throughout this year, I've been called a lot of things. Yeah, they got to stop this. I mean, he's got to have hit an hour, right? Feels like two. And to be fair, I am a lot of things. There you go. That was a big admission, in my opinion. A murderer is not one of them. Okay. Never has been, never will be. So he's throwing all his eggs into just getting off on intentional homicide. It's a great movie, House of Virgo. He's trying to do that cricket, but it seems difficult for him.
So before I close my statement. I'm supposed to be home right now. I've about I've got to leave in six minutes. See how much how much we can get through here. I just want to say open your hearts. Literally, feel sorry for me. That's what he's asking for. Open your hearts. Like, I don't either, Lucy. This is a totally improper argument, but the state almost asked for it and allowed him to do it. Again, they do not want appellate issues. Go inside yourself. But this was this fully, fully improper. Somebody said 41 minutes. Is that true? Gosh, it feels like longer than that. Definitely. I have no fear. Pray and do what you have the power to do right. it. You know it's right. It's true. Think about everything you've heard. Think about everything you haven't been privileged to hear. really trying to get them to think there's evidence out there that was hidden from them. Sounds like another defendant, right? Think about the whole entire picture. Above everything, whatever you decide, make sure you yourself can live with it. Correct. Patty Joe, that's correct. And Daryl Brooks, correct. Make sure the jury, make, make sure, sure you, can live, you can live with what you do here. That's the magnitude of the power that you have. I'll probably do that on a recap tonight. I want to announce what I'm going to do at the recap tonight. Um, but just like this tissue is in my hand, this is everything. You have everything. Be at peace with what you decide. Had no regrets. How do you have no regrets? Or he told them not to have any regrets. Don't let this decision probably you after it's over. Hopefully, we got a long lot lot of living ahead of us. Lord willing. Don't look back and kick yourself in the behind. Right? All right, people are saying he's done, so. All right. We're close. It's been about three weeks with you. Thank you, Cynthia. Took a lot of courage and a lot of guts to pause your life for this. To put important things on hold, to 
to basically stop your life. You should be commended for being able to sit up here with this amount of pressure. I want you guys to know that's not lost on me. I'm sure it's a lot. And you all should be commended because it, it, it took courage to do this. I don't know, but I would bet a lot of people wouldn't want to be sitting in your position right now. And you guys had the guts to do it. Thank you for that. Thank you for taking pretty much a month and setting it to the side for this. I know it's probably not proper, but you, you guys deserve a round of applause if you can get one. <laughs> He's trying to get on their good side, you know? She's no shame in his game. Thank you guys sincerely. And and I know and I and I have faith and I trust that Yeah, an hour. Is right. Ladies and gentlemen, I was I don't think it's fair to just say guys, but I believe in your heart you know you know what's right. Thank you. All right, he actually did stop on his own without having to be stopped by the judge. That's shocker of the century. Uh, before I give the state an opportunity um, to present rebuttal, please stand for a minute. So please stand. All right. So while they take a break, I've got to head home. I'm already late and probably in trouble here. Catch the recap tonight. I might be having a special guest that a lot of you have been asking about. Come on. Criminal defense giant handled cases. Probably not exactly like this, but we're going to talk about it. We're going to react to the state's rebuttal. We're going to react to what happened before the closings, and we're going to answer a lot of your questions. I just got an email from somebody upset I didn't answer their question. I'm going to respond to that email. I'm going to answer more questions tonight. It's hard to answer everything while the stream is to not um, talk over the stream. This is a little different than our normal recap and reaction videos, but check us out tonight. No, it's not Emily D. Baker, unfortunately. It's my dad, Big George, coming on the stream tonight, hopefully, probably around 9 o'clock Eastern time. So check that out. I'm out of here. Thank you, everybody. Hit that like button on the way out.